Welcome to The Sidebar, a book club for chronic masturbators. I'm David. And I'm Gabe. And I'm not gooning, I'm grooming. I'm Capitalissimo, and I'm also here. <laughs> and today we're concluding the Nut Cell Duology, discussing Incel by ARX Han. Coming up we have Tales of the Unreal number two in um, Run Halloween, hopefully, and Passage Prize Rewilding. As soon as they ship it. Yeah, please hurry up. One Thanks day. for making those shipping labels a month ago. <laughs> Maybe less tweeting about it, uh, Lomez. And also coming out soon, we're going to be doing a relong of Satyricon, the uh, the original Satyricon, in parallel with Gabe's very special uh, partnership with my with my favorite Dutchman. Last things so we're doing friend of the a, show, yeah, a deep good good friend of the show. We are doing a, a review of Cellini's masterpiece, *The Satyricon*, uh, absolute pinnacle of Italian uh, filmography. Um, and I look very much forward to it. First, my first tipping of the toe into film. Um, I'm looking quite forward. Well, it's to no it. giallo, and it's certainly no gore. 1987. <laughs> I've actually seen gore. Yeah, it's not. It's not sallo. <laughs> it's no sallo. Having seen both Gore and Satyricon, I can say they're pretty equally horny. It's, uh, it's, Satyricon is it's basically basically a basically a duet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dare I say Grun Grunhauer? Yeah, really Grunhauer. God, this there was so such a horny little podcast series we have going here. But, we um, we pre- this is this is the conclusion to Nut Cell, right? Like we <laughs> we we're trying to do Nut Cell Timber. But we're getting it out mm. in we're getting it out in a little late, which is appropriate because it's in cell. It takes longer. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we we really like to edge. Yeah, we really really edge this one out all the way into the second week of October. So yeah, we're really into ruined yeah, climax. Sorry, ARX. But um, but anyway, yeah. But, but so before we jump into it, as is our ritual, we'll do start generalities, and we'll do more of a more detailed blow by blow. So if someone clicked on this just trying to find out more about the book you can stick around for at least this first uh, portion of it um you know what what's your overall impression of incel yeah so incel is the story of a uh the the titular incel who in fact does not have a name he's is referred to only as anon um throughout the book and he is a hardcore um hardcore evolutionary bio guy who has um, a, a true believer in evolutionary biology and has convinced himself that if he does not have sex by the time he's 23, it will literally never occur. And so he's sort of made a, made a suicide pact with himself. And it's the story of him uh, attempting to not die by running game on as many women as humanly possible. Oh, and I should probably also say that this is not a comedy. We we covered we covered Nutcranker last time. Decidedly a comedy. This is a hardcore tragedy. This is this, this is the, a the cover tells yeah, you a lot of true. what you need to know. Prepare to this. cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cover is very sincere actually. The cover, the dyad, it forms a wonderful dyad. There is definitely a relationship between Nutcranker and this. Like, this is the Apollonian, like a dark Apollonian, like the dark sun, like the black sun, dare I say, the spinning wheel kind. And the other one is pure Dionysian. And we'll get into that later, but this does form a dyad with Nutcranker yeah. in some very mm-hmm. odd ways. And, Cap, I guess for someone that is, uh, you know, thinking about picking it up, I, I don't want to go into as crude as a suggest or a, you know, or a pass recommendation, but I guess what would be your qualifier uh, if you had any? Well... I mean, so I, I will say that this uh, this book was not a uh, light read. It was um, uh, it was deeply uncomfortable at a lot of points to read it, but it was also very interesting. Um, it welcome certainly the prose is is very um, unique uh, and not in a bad way. Um, it's dense. It's, oh yeah, very it's dense, it's very it's dense, but it's also I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's got an its own sort of like strange academic Language. quality to it because of the 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 voice of the of the protagonist. Um, 
that I think is certainly worth checking out. I mean, I think you should definitely read the preview on Amazon, if nothing else. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, there, it's, it's, you can't really cut it. It's it either or thing. And then, so this book in particular, anyone can read Nutcracker and at least glean something, even though their interpretation might be wrong, right? With My ears here, are burning. It's very either or. <laughs> <laughs> it's very either or of this. Basically, if you do not like the style, it's like American Psycho. Like you can, like you, I can't tell you to skim like the evil psych shit. Because everything is written in yeah. the language of evil psychology. And if you do not know anything about evil psych, you will get fucked over. Your interpretation will fundamentally be fucking, like, wrong. Right? So you actually... This is kind of a book you have to pay very close I attention sh- to the text to translate the... I should also means, say, basically. Uh, this is better than Brett Easton Ellis. Brett Easton Ellis is not as good of an author, uh, in my opinion. I, I don't, I'm not a big... F- I'm not a big fan you're of here, Brett. Here, I'm not a big fan of Brett. The Easton debut Ellis, novel, but um, high praise. Uh, 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 Arx Han is better than a New York Times best-selling author with multiple film adaptations. You're here to hear, folks. Yeah, the movies are better than the books, though. <laughs> so, ah, uh, you just got you got filtered. You got filtered by American Psycho. Definitely, I did, guarantee no, you skip pages. I never would. Uh, I, Chuck Palahniuk, like he's the like. He's the good Brett Easton Ellis, whose whose books are actually worth reading. Anyways, we're talking about this book, so yeah. Gabe, did you have I, same question? I mean, qualifiers or anything to someone? Oh, qualifiers! Qualifiers are a lot. This he does not compromise with the reader at all. Really, what you see is what you get. When you read the first ten chapters, it's going to be like that for a long time. If you do not like the voice, if you do not like the character, if you don't like the motifs, you will get fucked. It's very strong filter, and it speaks in a language. If you're not familiar with incel, even if you are familiar with incel culture, if you're not familiar with a very evil psych obsessed angle of incel culture, you'll be lost in translation, and you have to have a very close reading of the text to understand anything. So, I actually like that. I kind of like the fact it makes you work. But if you want an easy, breezy read about incels, go for Nutcranker. If you want something more technical, this would be perfect. But it does not compromise. And that's a benefit. I really think I like the fact that Han didn't compromise, and he stayed true to the concept and actually spoke in the language of the subject matter he's talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that, yeah, the, the technical strength of the prose and the consistency of it is great. I have some issues with it in terms of, it's just a style thing. I, I think, as you guys have already mentioned, it's a really strong style. Uh, we'll probably get more into it when we go at least into the first half. The comparison I jotted down was, um, if anyone, remember, I don't remember the name of the story, but there's a David Foster Wallace story about a Twinkie a Twinkie boardroom meeting and they talk at length about like the, the, the plastic and like the, the, you know, this is, um, you know, was it like a, you know, polyhedral fine, dense, you know, we interweave of this type of plastic, that type Uh, of highly technical car manual type language. I think that's Mr. Squissy. That's from, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is. To me, that was a, a comparison that came up in my mind like if you if you get if you get a chub thinking about reading that that kind of writing style i think you'll get a huge kick out of this and if you don't enjoy it you might be a little bit it, it might be a little bit slower uh going but it's it's a really well crafted yeah, bros voice. rejoice yeah, Wallace bros we're gonna make it um but if if you like it yeah I, I and he's very consistent with it i think he evolves on purpose as it goes and it's also to serve a purpose which we'll get into, like I, uh, you know, I have a, I have yeah, a, the, the book, I the book does, the, theory it is. the book does open with a trigger warning. Mm-hmm. The first edition, I should a actually, you know, what we well, should you, say, supposedly, so, uh, I read the first edition. I believe both of you guys read the first edition, but a second edition is out. Uh, oh, the, part the, the, the second edition uh, ha- does, it uh, allegedly changes the en- ending. So. Are you shitting me? No, it's, <laughs> no. It, it, meta yeah, it's it so meta the they're, they're in fact two <sighs> distinct editions out wait maybe we read the later edition because he uh, arx sent us an updated review copy like that would three be weeks it. ago that would be it yeah so we might have a different ending than you cap oh <laughs> oh this is gonna be yeah. awesome this could be great don't to spoil talk it about. don't spoil it yet but okay yeah because i would love to hear how how it's different 
Um, okay, so I guess that's high level impression. Anything else on that one? You guys good to kind of dig into it? And well, I would like to first before getting into criticisms, I would like to say I would compliment him that you know for a fact this heavy style is going to cut out a lot of your plebeian readers. It's very abrasive. It's like Tylenol and whiskey in terms of actually getting into it for the average reader. So I, I would like to commend him for taking very strong chance, a very and actually sticking with it, especially for a first novel, for something this this very abrasive style, in a sense for the general reader. So I'll, I'll yeah. clarify with yeah. that. I liked it. I liked it. So. Me too. Um, yeah. I don't know if I enjoyed the process of reading it, but I like the book. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's like it's like you know. Everyone wants to be a bodybuilder, but don't know. Don't nobody want to lift no heavy ass weights? That's what this is. That's what this book is. Pretty much. It ain't nothing but a peanut. Yeah. That's peak. <laughs> Big Ronnie says, "Read it." It's it's obviously is there's a lot of love and quality. So yeah, I, I probably will have yeah maybe some more more specific thoughts where I, I thought there was challenges. Um, I did think there was some structural issues we'll get into in terms of like the plotting. I think me and Gabe are actually going to disagree there because I think he's. He likes the the pacing more than I do. Oh, the pacing's trash. Oh, okay. Oh, so we're no, on board. I agree with okay. you right there. The pacing's trash. <laughs> right. well, no, it, it's 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 paceless and some it's it's a mood pace, which basically means it's paceless. But if you like it, that kind of thing. All right. Well, I, let's do a dive into the meat of it and give people a chance. So if you've not read it, I I, I think it sounds like we generally enjoyed it and respected what it was doing. Even we have some qualifiers. So consider checking it out or at least read the sample and uh, make an informed decision and let's just dive into it and I'll give a summary maybe the first few chapters and um, and then we'll just see where it takes us so we open up with Anon the incels as Cap already said he's in a club he's doing PUA style um, you know tricks to try and pick up chicks at the bar cold approaches do the cold cold open yeah cold approach to uh, you know, a six out of ten here, a seven out of ten there. There's like a million seven out of tens in this book. They're all seven out of ten. Spoiler alert. Um, and he, you know, he's just he's he's batting zero. Goes, you know, goes home, looks at the calendar, realizes it's. I think I can't remember if it's his birthday that day or it is is like just happened. And he's doing the mental math that he's twenty. Is he twenty? Is he just turned twenty two? Um, at the no, 22. His, his 23rd birthday yeah, is coming 23rd up. Yeah, his 23rd birthday is coming up. And statistically, men that don't have sex by 23, by 23 according to his, um, you know, whatever numbers he was looking at, basically you never have sex. So your your chance to continue to go down, you'll ever, ever uh, achieve it. And basically, and he whips his dick out and he and he's, <laughs> hovers a, um, a syringe over it with an inject, a Russian ZX whatever injectable. ZRP-O. Uh, Seven oh fifty seven. Okay, something you have in stock, Cap. You got that. The oh, I, I believe if there. you read the trigger <laughs> warning, it mentions explicitly that it is not a real substance, and you cannot find it. I had assumed so. But. Well, it, that's if you if you take the author. I, I, I think I think just just to sideline on on ZRP O fifty seven. Um, I think that the reason why he put the trigger warning in there saying that it is not a real thing is in case this book really took off and people started trying to sell that shit, some random shit to inject into your dick on the dark web. He wanted to make it clear that it doesn't, that it is not real. (laughs) Yeah. From the hit novel incel. (laughs) Look, I mean, stop me ARX. I'm still doing it. (laughs) I'm I'm, going to inject whatever I can find. (laughs) I'll write the label on myself. Put I'm gonna in, manifest uh, this. this. <laughs> guys do. Um, I'm gonna put know, this on my vision board. And I'm arms. gonna stab myself in the dick. <laughs> oh no! What well, you're talking? So this these these two scenes actually take a. There's a lot of punch mm-hmm. in these two scenes. In the starting with the club with his friend Jason, and then also when he comes back uh, home to try to stick the needle on his dick while he's on. It's Rush not Hour Jason's faces. This is a, this is a different films. friend that you don't see oh, sorry. again. Oh, Anon. No, no, no! It's oh, his, it it's his tall Aryan friend. I seriously thought. I seriously oh, thought. Oh yes, Jason you're right. Too, you're right. Which no, I'm is sorry. this? By the way, this is a theme in the book. Because no, retroactively, no character ever appears twice except for like one or two people. Jason uh, and his Jason and Anon sister. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah that's it. And Andrew. Yeah. No, Andrew no. appears but, uh, for like a one bit part later. He yeah. gets like one line of no, dialogue later. 
when they're talking about the dual mating the hypothesis, classroom. which he changes the name. Yeah. Yeah. He, he says time. like yeah. one thing and then it's it's the instructor. I'm just getting way ahead. But anyway, uh, uh, just just it's a theme. But we, yeah, yeah, but yeah, so but in the club we see him very clearly that he is very much like a walking stereotype of the incel, of the hyper mm -hmm. statistical uh, evil psych incel. He's like, you know, I brush my shoulder and I make sure my angle, my face is angled in 43 degrees and leaving my space evasive for the woman's face and all these kind of things. And he's very racial. He's like, oh, based on I have something called white privilege, which makes my sexual market value increase by two points and all these kind of things. Right. So the, the, the statistical incel. And uh, he is a very right off the bat. And we just got off of uh, Nutcranker and uh he, Anon, the, his name is Anon. Anon is very much the opposite of Spencer from right off the get-go. He's a deeply mechanical thinker. Everyone is like a RPG. Oh, he's, he's a he's like a complete he is Fantasy a complete stem cell. Whereas Spencer Grunhauer is yeah. absolutely a humanities Chad. Yes, it's it's literally you know that fucking Renaissance painting of Plato and Aristotle. Aristotle's hands to the ground while while Plato's hands is up. That is Spencer, and versus that's the dyad of uh, these two characters. Like Sp Spencer would not care a damn. He would never cry like actually willingly. He always retroactively. He has no regrets. You know. You know. Despite him ejaculating upon himself, upon his own chest, he's still a fellow of infinite jest. That kind of thing. He's always a. F he's always happy, Spencer. We Spencer's must imagine Spencer happy. Change the. <laughs> Yes, no. no, we don't even have to. He's openly he can, happy. He can rationalize he's so anything. so happy yeah. and so mentally... Yes, he's, his brain is adapted to the point that nothing negative happens to him. Even when he cries, his mental state is still fundamentally happy and cheerful. Spencer has the groon hairy gift whereas of Whereas poor, you can't poor, Anon, Anon. poor Anon sees, sees with... Is, in a in a scientistic way, not not he thinks he's fully scientific, but he's definitely at least partially scientistic, in the sense that he he has a he has a hubris, he has a hubris of understanding which he at several points has to has to address throughout the book. True, uh, you know what I will mostly mostly agree with that. Like there's this one quote or later on is like. Personhood is a thing that you cannot give to yourself. It's given by other people. That would never, ever, ever be he said never, out about yeah. Spencer. He, yeah. Like, he gives... He has his own energy. He is his own... You know, it's it's like a Spence... Uh, sorry, Schopenhauer, right? The animal who bites himself becomes the first predator, right? That's Spencer. He he, he lives off of his own energy. He's, he's, he's powered by himself, right? He has a nuclear cold fusion of a human being. Well... Anon is he's trying to he understands he's in the game and he tries to play within the game's rules. He's very much reactive rather than proactive. Well, Spencer is right. proactive. There's another point with the the language here because you're right, Gabe. It, it starts with such a clear, um, stark mechanical language, and it softens a little bit as the book goes on. But I, it's really distinct here, and it the my whole theory behind it is that it's part of this theme of um, his deterministic worldview, his brain as computer. It comes up in like four conversations as it goes, but you know, he, he refers mm -hmm. to, you know, his eyes as ocular ports and he, other people as well, but it's always this extreme mechanical language. I didn't, I didn't he, as a hologram too. Mm -hmm. He feels like a well, hologram. Actually, He's I, not really yeah. there. I have a, There's I have no a ghost in the machine. From... I have a quote from here that from the first chapter that I think this is after he has left his friend Andrew with Andrew's conquests and he has just decided that he's completely struck out at this bar, goes home alone. Um, and imagine, and he's jacking off and he starts dissociating and he starts saying, naked and masturbating, you are the wire-headed rodent contorted into a multitude of positions. A series of female forms dance across your retinas like rabbit animals, squeezing down on the twin tube of your optic nerves where they meet with the penises of the POV male actors, jump-starting a feedback loop instantiated in a complex array of globular proteinaceous computations. Your brain is transposing your penis onto the frames of your, of your on-screen avatars, allowing you to momentarily transcend the boundaries of your body. Suddenly, the penis of pixels becomes your own. 
forming a virtualized representation I of an alternate you. dimension oh, oh, oh. where you are the object of desire, a paradise where your swollen memory has functionally infinite choices of holes. <laughs> and like that is the movie that That's gr- that is it's great. A, a like a number one a good uh uh, good representation of the thinking of Anon, and mm-hmm. also a sample of a of a thing that that uh, Eric Han does in the writing here, where uh, we have not had a book where they regularly lapse into second person. Anon is so dissociated that when that his internal monologue is second person. He does that a lot as a coping. Like he, he constantly keeps on stepping out of his pain. He, he, he's almost a. Uh, it's his version of taking. He's self aware about this too. Like he, like he's trying to be objective with his own pain. Like again, he's so I hecking love the science, but in like the, in the based way, where he'll step out of himself. He constantly kind of denigrates his own pain as an illusion. Like I, he describes himself as a neuromuscular neurotic possessed by the physical properties of knowledge. <laughs> That's yeah. the style of uh, his his um, uh, talking and his speaking, his way of thinking even. Like, even when he appropriates emotions, he does get emotional. That's the thing. But he does it in such a mechanical way where the reader will be... This the interpretation of this, I can rewrite this while maintaining the same meaning, but using more humane language. And your perception of everything he goes through would change. It's just because he's trying to, like, mechanically get his way into a soul, which is the hologram, which has different connotations. Mm. Right, and uh, I really liked what you said. I knew uh, this would be a big point, the penis of pixels. Uh, because in that scene, after the bar scene, he goes home and he gets the package. And of course, it's under Tyler Bateman. Yeah. Again, Han is very aware of the meme of the incel. One criticism I'd say, it's not, it's not accurate to the incel. Or he's having a battle between an accurate representation of a real human being. And then the mimetic concept of the incel trademark, LOL, incel mm-hmm. meme, right? As, especially also the um, the um, organization, the construction of the novel is way off. Like you will, the he will humanize this character throughout the novel, and then halfway through, have him be having debates with redditors, and he makes like a step back, or he becomes a caricature, and then a character yeah. again, when he's most like a caricature in the beginning. Right, and so he develops, 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 and then the character shit. Oh, I need to have him like call people racial slurs online in the middle because right. this is supposed to be a commentary, right? But the stuff that's a commentary feels very off because this, this real life human being briefly becomes a caricature in one chapter, and then for the next thirty chapters we write fine. It's very minor criticism. It's you just, it's not even the chapters themselves. You front you should front load at the incel caricature stuff in the beginning, like around here. Not when you already start kind of developing him as a character. Yeah, yeah. The racism and, uh, never felt very genuine to me either. Like it always felt um, well, <laughs> like it, it was trying to hit a hit a quota. Well, also, I mean, so the racism in here is um, that er- Eric Han is is Asian, is ethnically Asian. So uh, the the Anon is white, and. Like I'd say, I'd I'd say the Pure yeah, and I would say the um the the like most of the racism is going to is be going to be anti Asian racism in this. So mm-hmm. I noticed that too. The thing is, he he flirts with anti black racism at the beginning, right? With both both Jason and him are anti black yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. His best friend Jason. His best friend Jason, who he is flirts Asian, with it, and that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was Korean. Yeah, he, uh, he flirts with it, and then stops, and then he he goes in the safety of oh, I th- I think it's more of optical. Like I'm Asian, I can make fun of my own people. Like he flirts with it, and then he takes the more compromised safe route of just going against Asians, because it's not even because it, in cell community. Like and again, I wasn't really around this scene at 2012. It was more 2014, 2015. But the Asian hate in terms of the weird online right thing wasn't a big thing at the time. I don't think I don't it's ever it been a thing, honestly. Asian hate, I feel, has always been a leftoid meme about, um, you know, quote unquote, incel culture, as much as that is actually even a thing. Asian people are the new white yeah. people. Oh, it's definitely a thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, but no, uh, like online, actually, if you take the looks of the only academic to study incels is William Costello. If you look at people who actually use incel.ko or Reddit, like, it's actually rather diverse. You know, there's a lot of South Indians, South Asians who are Why incels. Why can't these and, like, poor Britain fellows and just have someone show them bobs? <laughs> <laughs> to take a cloth oh, off, yes. damn it. But, uh, but no... But so with this di penis of pixels, the relationship of the character with the digital is very interesting. So the the first arc, the micro arc, uh, kind of the version of with uh, Nutcranker of him in the prison, is the club, the syringe, him sleeping after jacking off and looking at the calendar. The first time, the opening is him looking at his calendar, making like uh, dates to when he kills himself if he doesn't mm. get laid. Right? That's like the setup. That's like the prelude or uh, preface. And there's a lot going on here just from the beginning. So he takes his copy of Rush Hour 2 with both Jackie Chan, or Asian person, and a black person's face on there. He puts his dick between them. And he's about to stab his dick with the syringe. Now, the way he's presented here, he what he calls his penis is something. And uh, the way the penis is presented in this novel it takes three forms: the Dionysian dick, the Chthonic <laughs> cock, and the penis of pixels. Yeah. Right. So this penis right here, the he calls it a worm. Right, a worm, and he, he uses animal metaphors. Every animal metaphor comes twice: birds, eels, and worms. So the he describes himself as a hologram, as very mechanical. It's like he needs to have sex. I must have vagina. Vagina must come in. It's like a robot where you kind of super glue an organic dick onto the robot, and it's stimulating his like electrons, his circuits, but he doesn't know why. And he describes it as a worm. It's a pathetic worm. And the reason why I call it cathonic, right? Because it's the it's a, what are worms? Worms are in the soil of the earth of the of the mother earth right it's a it, it, it's also submissive to the earth right that's why the worm is pathetic so he, he describes it as a worm right and it, it only when he afterwards of of chickening out of stabbing his dick he jerks off he presents himself within a simulacrum of the penis of pixels right upon the digital and he self-inserts into and he cries. He calls himself to sleep after jerking off to a girl. He has a conflict because the girl in the video looks like the one of his ex girlfriend. Ex -girlfriend or the yes. ex girlfriend. His yes, Elizabeth, who plays a, who haunts him throughout the entire novel. And we never get. I love the fact he showed restraint. You, we actually yeah, never get do. to see her. Uh, At the end. Well, when? Yeah. Do you? Oh, this might be a difference. There's she doesn't come back in the end for, on on ours. How does she come really? back? In like, the oh, end? oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. She's that's a, our first timeline so branch. The um, oh, man, I wish that. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm, I'm holding my physical copy, but uh, Han sent me the publication version, so I'm going to download that and search it because it. So they eventually reveal like that she is. Um, they eventually reveal that she is Asian. Uh, because that's not no, revealed wait. in ours. No, God, no. Really? Okay. Damn, this is so different. So ARX, you just, you just you assume done? that her, you know, her name is Elizabeth and her hair is red, but she's like an Asian with facial piercings and dyed hair. Uh, also, also, no easy way. <laughs> but. Oh, that fucks with my interpretation so much. This is... Yet again, I can't tell if Han is a retard or a genius <laughs> a lot of times, especially with his Based. novel. It's, you know, it's, it's very fucking weird. There's, I'll, I'll put that in the back of my head. But for our versions of me and, uh, of me and Dave, that she never makes it. I was game. actually going to suge suggest she's one of those characters that should have been cut. Because, yeah, she comes up only as a memory. She comes up... Um, yeah, Jason mentions her. I think in like the third, in the third chapter or so, and then she comes up, like, like yeah, a handful of times as a memory, and then at the end, um, yeah, there's zero mention. I think he he um, when he's at the beach, he might like think about her one last time and something like that, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two women that fuck with him are there's two different characters, female, which happens later, but. 
And it's, there's also the notion of of time, because right, he's nostalgic for Elizabeth. Elizabeth haunts him, genuine hauntology, right? And there's this beautiful. He's actually very good with visual metaphors, because yeah. so after jerking off to a woman who looks exactly like her, he crawls into a for the ninety fifth day in a row. And he, he has a mount. Yes, and he throws the cum napkin, the little cum shrapnel napkin, into the floor, into a little mountain. Yeah, so it's a little mountain. It's it's a physical representation. Like, if this was a painting, the difference between Nutcranker and this, if this was a painting, this would be like an Edward Hopper painting of, like, a woman getting dressed. You see an incel, you don't see his face, he's away from the camera, and you see the mountain of cum napkins. While Spencer is more of a Caravaggio. Right, despite his love of like German painters, which they both love German painters, that's one of the similarities between the they two. They both they both but love an Austrian Carvalho, painter. Like, when Jesus, based. <laughs> well, they actually D- they he do doesn't not. name yeah, drop does Hitler, uh, and, and and I thought, and if you notice, he's much more he likes Wagner, but Wagner exclusively as a status yes. signal, as a in a technical mechanical way. Like, uh, for example, um, he has a calendar. He's a shape rotator. He loves shapes and lines and very much an, an um, architect, very very visual shape rotator. While, yet again, Spencer's humanities major, in his bedroom, he has Goya's this father eating the son, right, which is a beautiful thing between these two males of America, that the previous generation fucks them over, that kind of thing. But, um... No, but back to my main thing is the concept of hauntology, of a canceled future. All of that, all that cum, that mountain of cum, is seeds, literally life, a life canceled lives. Uh, it, it literally, he falls asleep as a child, as a, in a fetal position, like a baby, and uh, he falls asleep next to a mountain of canceled futures, which I thought was actually very kind of cool. And because, and I think it's intentional to be like this, because the concept of canceled futures or hauntology plays throughout the entire novel. Jason, right? He gets castrated. He castrates himself chemically. He can't have children. Uh, on campus, a chapter after this, uh, he's um, Anon is eating his lunch, and a baby bird falls, right, uh, and is being slowly eaten alive by ants, right. So it, he he attributes this to evolution, right? The evolutionary process has deemed this bird not to be worthy of survival, and uh, what Anon does is he just stomps on its head. You know, let no one say that I'm without mercy. He right. says this, right? And yet again, another a purposely canceled future, which is kind of a form of pseudo eugenics, right? Because you're canceling a potential life of future. So it, the concept of ontology plays throughout the entirety of the novel. Yeah, I, I feel like the well, what is his argument that so, ev- I, his his whole thing is like that evolution has no guiding light, basically that it's just these these uh, well no no no, no. mechanical he, there is an like implied machine basically it's an implied telos mm-hmm. there is an implied telos uh, when he gives a lecture a dream lecture to one of the girls he's trying to have sex mm-hmm. with he brings up the whole crab thing about how a lot of animals will bio like the crabs are one of the most convergent they, evolution independently into, evolved uh, the crab like mm-hmm. form yeah. Yeah, so this is where this is where I, I'll hint that one of the biggest secondary sources I got my influence upon this. I usually like sticking truly to the text. I'll bring this more up later. Was the philosophy of Nick Land, right? It, it haunts this novel in a weird sense, or at least for me, right? Is the idea of an implied telos of evolution, of like technology and intelligence and evolution, evolution. Some guy, um, Jason, he has an argument with Jason much later down the novel. That the idea of evolution melts away. It's a universal corrosive. It, it fundamentally changes everything. It, it changes anything human. It becomes nihilistic because everything is evolution. Everything is purely mechanical. So Jason argues against free will because evolution just kind of takes autonomy from everything. Mm-hmm. For which is very much when Nick Lane argues in something like Meltdown. The you know technology and evolution, the concept of progress within itself fundamentally melts down everything that tries to prevent its adaptiveness it, it's like a um, in a nuclear reactor the nuclear waste will always melt through the rods trying to prevent a meltdown eventually so his view of evolution plays through this entire thing it's not a telos it's an implied telos the invisible hand of evolution ha- like a uh, haunts it i i i literally have a note here that literally mentions the invisible hand 
And uh, the one of the students later on says the unseen hand. I predicted this kind of model. It's his weird version of evolution. It, he he objectifies it in almost like a idolatrous way. You know, er, Darwin is mentioned a handful of times, and two of the times he's associated with God or a, a supernatural, the God of Darwin or the ghost of Darwin, which spells God. Uh, he very much, and he treats him like a prophet, like his burden to carry. Because sometimes he complains about why am I ugly? Why are girls not attracted to me? But God, like, you know, Darwin doesn't care. His ghost will say, you know, don't complain. This is the process. The evolution is the process. Don't complain. Adapt. And then the ghost shits in his mouth, right? Um, literally in, the, in, the, in that scene. So his version of evolution, which is the crux of this entire thing, the big meta thing I have about this book is the idea of evolution. Because if you read a normie review of this, I read a review on this on Goodreads, absolute god-awful review. Uh, he thinks it's a commentary on that evolution is a pseudoscience. Like, oh, it's mocking people who believe in evolution is pseudoscience. <laughs> Wait, in on reality, incel? Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Oh my like, god. Go, 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 Goodreads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need a link to that. That's awesome. Yes. But... But here's the thing. Based retard. Here's the weird thing about it. I am actually... <laughs> no, because the thing is, it depends on the whole idea of memet memetics. Like, I'll get into this much later. Uh, memetics versus... Because it's not stylish to omit this kind of thing. Did again. You know, you're not supposed to say, oh, when, when a... The woman knows when you walk up to her, you want to have sex with her. But you cannot say the truth, the autistic truth of like, hey, I'm approaching you to uh, have coitus. No, you got to put the human layer above the autistic cold truth, right? The ghost in the machine. There has to be a, a spirit, which which Anon struggles to construct. He tries to construct a spirit. And uh, the the theories of evolution here, the thing is, he's actually not wrong most of the time. I mean, I... When you actually know Evil Psych, I read a lot of Evil Psych, I, I enjoy a lot of Evil Psych, and actually in a lot of ways, Han has done his research. He name drops biodiversity, you know, I've laughed several times when he brings up like HBD or other things, or even like mainstream things. He only debunks one to get into one debate about a concept that's very popular in the manosphere. That's called the dual mating hypothesis, which is, you know, Chad fucks and beta bucks, that kind of thing, where a woman will purposely have like a, a, like a, a beta male on reserve and purposely fuck Chad, like cuckolding as a strategy, as a biologically implemented strategy. And of course, the, uh, that's, this strategy is, uh, was in, um, the concept was brought forth by David M. Buss. David M. Buss is like the professor who basically founded like the manosphere, but he, he replicates, all this stuff is very replicable. He's a very uh, intelligent man, very, very much respected within his field. He brought up the idea of the dual mating hypothesis, but then later retracted the idea after the numbers didn't add up. So that's the one of the evolutionary psychology things that people shit on Anon for and debunk it. That actually gets, gets debunked in a novel. But in other cases, he's actually very much kind of correct in a lot of evil psych stuff. And... It, the novel doesn't debunk evil psych in a lot of ways, but kind of shows the cruel truth of it, of its most fervent believer, which I'll get into later, so sorry. Uh, before we started this, you, you had briefly mentioned the Landian, uh, the Landian interpretation. Are you saying that, that he, has, he has gotten into some like evo psych hyper-reality where his idea of his own failure is, like, man, is manifesting itself? Yes, well, well, uh, I'll just skip straight to, to the what I think is the Plato's cave. Did I say hyper reality? Of My I meant criticisms of Anon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hyperstition. What you believe, something you bring it to. Yeah, it's it's classic, classic land. No, what reason why I got the when it gets truly Landian is. Up to there's this one point in the novel where it gets pretty really good, where my brain was activated, where you know my my stone cold Straussian spirit was activated. Both my uh, Straussian spirit and my Landian spirit was when he takes his uh, um, co-student Andrew, who's ugly by the way, who's confirmed to be ugly. He takes him down to a basement of a of a canceled French evil psych guy, who is obviously referenced. I think is to Jay Giuseppe, right, a, a notorious evil psychologist who fucks autistic girls. Right, who, a real life guy, a real life character of uh, our scene, our thing of ours, right? So he takes him to uh, the basement of an old studies lab, and the Frenchman, before getting canceled, he would put a monitor in between the legs of a girl and to um, to study tightness and moisture and show her uh, footages of chimps funking, 
and also show footage of Brad Pitt. Well, it's more than like a camera. It's like a dildo. It's like a moisture dildo or something. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a re it still records it. It's better than heat structures, right? So he records it. And this scene, like, really grinded my gears. This entire scene. Like, I got up and I started pacing back and forth. I wanted to beat the fuck out of Andrew. I got it heated, man. I got, I was, like, in it. I got visceral. Right, I like usually, you know, I, I'm more like, oh, focus on the text, bro. Like, you know, I'm very much a text. I don't like to get personally into it. Right, I'm very much like a very classical Nabokovian focus on the text thing. But I got this got personal for me. So you you read the scene, and he says, "Yours, how much of the how much science can be done with this? How much studying can be done with this?" Hypothetically speaking, with like the Google Glass thing or cameras, you can based on um, recording the structures of the woman's vagina. Um, on moisture and such like such like this, future incels. Well, he doesn't call them incels, but basically, he, you he can was he was saying that you could learning... construct the absolutely optimal conversation tree in order to run game and always succeed um, in in picking up a girl. And Andrew was like, "Yes, dude, this is." insane no one will fund this and there are better ways you would do better to like not uh go down this path well, and there's just a limited metric too he's like if you're only looking at vaginas he's, all, he's also yeah he's also like there's a million other else. things yeah but it, he's so to me it was like a view of anon being so data driven that he gets into this like data driven death spiral of like okay what's this one aspect i can look into and kind of his life may be saved here or maybe he maybe it would have worked out who knows by being blocked by andrew nope. and he goes on his own adventure of you know doing it himself the old-fashioned way some uh with some boot leather yeah but th no that's basically what he does you do realize what he does he basically does it through human means this is like the idea of the mechanical he hi hyperstitions is out in real life so this scene is this way you interpret this scene there's two conversations that happen in this novel this conversation and a conversation with a family member later on that will fundamentally, your interpretations of these two conversations will fundamentally change completely how you read this novel and the purpose of this novel. And I mean, I'm not even getting into the afterword, just the text itself. Well, what, if there is the moral of this story, what is that moral? Because what his friend says, he expects, hold on, let me, let me get the PDF right there. So he expects... That, you know, he, he explains his idea of gamifying the mating system. That, you know, like what Cap says, like almost like a slot machine design of dating. You, uh, an incel can pick up on body imaging cues and learn a dialogue tree. Like, like I said, memorize the dialogue tree this through sheer game theory of eventually figuring out the perfect dialogue tree to seduce women. Right? Which is not very extreme. It's not, you know, eugenics haunts this scene, right? He uses the word applied evil psych, right? Uh, that's the exact word, applied evil psych. So, and it it scares the fuck out of uh, this uh, guy. It, it terrifies well, yeah, because well, Andrew. Andrew is, yeah, because Andrew's like, oh, well, yeah, no, I've tried to do this as a career, though, rather than, like, get all of my funding pulled and get kicked out of the lab. <laughs> Yes. And try to sell this on the internet. But no, no, no. Uh, here's the thing. It's not even that cruel. He gets emotional. He gets emotional. I'll, I'll recite the dialogue. Uh, this is the edge of discovery. The manner in which science marches forward. With one scientist mind-fucking another. Have you told anything about this so far, he says? He, uh, I say, no. I want to be the first. I want to collaborate with you on this. How long have you been working on this? Not long. I'm very early on this. I want to bring in you first. Get your thoughts on it before we get formalized with it. And he get and the thing is, and he gets angry. He says, "I could tell you weren't jerking. You weren't joking when you showed me the diagram." He says, grimacing. He grimaces. And I say, "Excuse me." He uh, Andrew says, "Look, I like you, dude." He says, qualifying himself. So don't take this the wrong way. I just don't understand how you could possibly think any of this is even remotely possible. I say, of course it's possible, I say. Even if it's, if it's somewhat disgusting, the device has already been proved and used by other academics. It's already been done. This right here is some real MK Ultra shit, Anon. What the fuck is MK Ultra? He shakes his head. This idea needs to die in this basement, he says. That's I can guarantee you voice. that. <laughs> but what if it works, I say. <laughs> 
<laughs> if anybody was crazy enough to actually try this, not only would they get destroyed by the REB, they'd probably get hauled in front of some human rights commission they built exclusively to punish the people crazy enough to be involved. A ratchet dials in the corner of my throat. I study his face and he studies mine. That's it? You don't have anything good to say about this? All I can tell you is this is the most autistic fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Dude, I'm not autistic. I know, I'm not exactly using the term clinically here. Like this, this is on another level, man. So what are you saying exactly? I'm saying this idea is the most autistic thing that I've ever heard. That if you tell anyone else about this, especially Williams, their professor, you'll be laughed out of the room if you're lucky. That will probably be the best possible response. More likely, you'll be made to lose your job. I don't understand. He made an even worse face, no longer trying to sublimate some parts of his disapproval. Now, this piece of dialogue right here, this I chewed on this dialogue, this dialogue right here pounded my brain into something that fundamentally cracks my interpretation of this novel to such a ridiculous degree. He says this, If you can't understand why this is a terrible, a terrible idea, he says, then you need to reconsider whether or not you're cut out to be a psychologist. Consider another discipline, zoology. Maybe entomology may be a better fit. Studies of bugs. <laughs> so, and, uh, yes, right? Uh, sorry, I, I had to skip forward some uh, other shit right here. And then um, he says this, which, yet again, completely changed it again. Uh, from his chair, he stands up, no longer regarding me as a friend. Okay, because you're clearly not following, I'm going to make it even simple for you. Vaginal wetness, blood flow, an erection, whatever, it's not a fucking light switch, Anon. Physiology alone is incontrovertible evidence of sexual desire, he says. There's a lab down the hall where they're writing to paper on vaginal wetness as an evolved reflex, a biological mechanism built to avoid life-threatening infections associated with genital tearing of from rape. You can't reduce sexuality to a single perimeter. Not only is it dehumanizing, it's dangerous. There's no empirical substitute for talking to human beings <laughs> and asking them how they feel. Moisture isn't the same thing as fucking consent. He gestures around the room. Oh my god. Plus, there's a reason nobody does this shit anymore. It's creepy as fuck. And this is, I, I was one for one. I was this, I was Anon. Right? My oh, we know you are, oh, We know you are. We, we know how <laughs> the scene to... went because we know no. you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I wanted to transport into the novel. Listen, I stopped reading for 30 minutes. I was pacing over my room. You wanted back to fight and Andrew? Forth, fucking. Tr I know. I wanted to kill him, yeah. motherfucker. I wanted to get fucking Anon's laptop and crush his fucking skull in. This man is fucking. Inv fucking. Inv not invaded. He's fucking infected with a memetically transmitted mental mass delusion called morality. This is just fucking. Well, oh, actually, God, I, got bad news. I got bad news for you, Gabe. You might want to sit down. Uh, ARX is talking through Gabe to you. You're you're being de-radicalized, or well, your fail, just failure to de-radicalize you in this scene. He's, you're he, you're yeah. supposed to be yes, be, be persuaded. No, no, I. This is where I take the Straussian reading, right? Because this right here, this is, is the, the this is the deadest. Of the, this is bitch. murder. Uh, this isn't like death of the author. It's actual murder of the author. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I, no, the no, author no, did not he says, consent. He steal man's ARX argument. Did you forget some, to ask uh, someone to this for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not consent to this. Or I do not consent to this because he knows too much. If you realize, if you're into evil psych, he brings up a lot of concepts that are true. These are Diane Fleshman, Robert, uh, Robert Richard Ringham, uh, Robert E. Plowman, a lot of these, David Reich. Uh, I know all these. He some of cites shit that I know. Like, the vaginal wetness thing I just mentioned earlier. Like, Andrew's point can be debunked 3,000 fucking ways. It's like, motherfucker, why is it that women, majority, vast majority of the fucking time, um, Stockholm Syndrome is in women? Yes, it, uh, the wet, vaginal wetness is a signal of a evolved reflex to build around rape, but it, you don't know, motherfucker, it also stimulates excitement, aka dopamine receptors, you dumb motherfucker. Right, Diane Fleshman, a female evil psych woman, talked about this, right? That How women, are, you know, the idea of Stockholm Syndrome came in a lot of ways when women would be taken to multiple tribes to get railed because they would get kidnapped after their beta boyfriends got killed by Alpha, Giga, Chad, <laughs> Mongols, or into Orient, or so mm -hmm. forth. So, and you also, like, oh, consent? What, do you believe in holistic medicine, motherfucker? You don't believe in holistic medicine. So what, consent? What, the Amish who thinks, that like, you know, medicine is, uh, like, satanic? He's like, oh, I can cure my cancer by eating blueberries and stubbing fig leaves up my ass. You don't believe in this shit. You, I know you don't. Right, this weird, you, the, the, also, if you notice, rape and italics 
Rape and consent are in italics, by the way. Right? So it's a very different from the rest of the text. So this is this is where I turn to Stone Cold Straussian, right? I, I throw that shit away, right? Because I know Han has done his research into this. He cites too much legitimate theories on evil psych to throw this shit away. The only uh, like this the, the penis stuff and, and measurement that shit's a little wonky. That shit's mostly incel stuff, which has basically been debunked or like outdated. But a lot of this evil psych he references is actually up to par and up to standard. So I know he's done his research, and I know that Han knows this, and Han knows that a guy like me would read this and know that Andrew's in the wrong, right? And multiple times, and and I the word creepy punches you again. It punch Jesus Christ! Look here, dude, my dude, brain disengages what, from the conversation what altogether. Standards, though, I mean the, these how, these older researchers you're referencing. I I don't know. I'm not some deep evil site. This people. is 2012. Diane Fleshman, George Jeffrey Miller, the rape hypothesis. You know, you know women have been. Uh, it's been notoriously time. You know, also, also, I will, I will say as a, as a as a John Norman Stan, I think that there is certainly a, a tendency towards towards submission uh, in uh, among women. However, uh, you know, I, there is also the competing theory of Stockholm syndrome, where it's actually just activating the response that you have when you have an infant because it's mostly activated through sleep deprivation. So there's True. where you're actually, but, but you, yeah, yeah. that's a chicken and an well, egg thing. Sort of. I mean, it makes people eternally love their babies, even though it's essentially a tiny torture machine for the first six months. So <laughs> True. Well, yeah, but also the pair bonding not to, not, thing. I, I am certainly stuff, not you know, saying also that you should not love your babies, <laughs> but... <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, but as a mechanism. You think that's the one that's going to get us canceled after everything no, I've no, said No, 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 right I, I just, I want to make sure, I, no. just like, just like, just like ARX Han saying that the Russian dick drug is not real, I don't want to put any anti-natalism out there. Pro-natalism, have more kids. no. E girls listening to us are thriving female audience. Please love your babies <laughs> yeah. and make more. Yeah, of hey, them. no, right, dude, please, leg lock, you. throw away the pills, get raw dogged. It's the best. Based. Yeah, go for it. So true. We're a trad podcast here. We're Catholic. We're trad yep. calves here. All right. Every so, sperm is sacred. So this entire scene, based, true. And again, the, the, again, the mountain of dead sperm in his napkins, the mountain of like cum napkins in the beginning of the scene, a hauntology of dead lives, of dead futures, right? But uh, back to this. The reason why I'm so impassioned by this scene is that he is doing such a good job. And throughout the novel, he cites real, he changes the names, the dual mating hypothesis. He changes his name to separate, or he changes the name, but it's the dual mating hypothesis. Obviously, it's a dual mating hypothesis, but he changes the name for some reason. So I know he did this research, at least to this degree of the evil psych shit, in order to even reference the names, to even use the names properly to a certain degree. So I know he knows that Andrew is fucking pants on the head, dumb fucking retard. He's a retard. He's fucking wrong. Right? He's absolutely mind-numbingly retarded. And it's absolutely frankly... Well, you know, hold on, hold on. Because An is, Anna, he is, imagines is, himself as an I, alien. I, I love that every single time we do one of these, we got we to do a book where we agree with you, Gabe. Um, <laughs> so, Dave, you have to be the, the contrarian next time. Um, so, it, like, Andrew is saying several things that are, like, normative here. Right, like in fact, it is. Yes, it's, it, it's in fact, it hegemony. is creepy. He's correct that that is the set the set of circumstances that will occur if Anon pursues this. Right, like absolutely. Yeah, something more extreme than just uh, AI glasses. No, 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 no. I'm saying, um, I'm saying the consequences for Anon, like if he brings it to you know uh, a review board to get his funding, like he's going to get shit canned. So, mm -hmm. um, but no, Andrew gets way too emotional because it, uh, he emphasizes the whole rape thing. It's not just, hey, it's politics, man. It's office politics, man. He doesn't go like this. He generally gets emotionally flustered. He break their relationship. Sure. Their friendship is gone. He generally gets emotionally disgusted yeah. at this. Yeah. He's, he's obviously like a leftist guy and, and Anon is talking very seriously about these like a very aggressive regimen of these moisture vagina tests and then applying it to seduce women in a mechanical way. It's just like it, I mean, it, 
to cast point like any review board or any any like school whatever they call their bullshit court systems you know they're gonna they're gonna hate this stuff but see here's the thing this mind fucked me this changes my entire I'll, I'll carry you through you're thinking i'm crazy right now but there's one conversation two conversations after this actually that will change whether you side in x or y will change your entire interpretation okay. of this novel interesting because the idea of psychology and therapy floats through this entire thing it's supposed to be like nature versus nurture right because you know to use the idea of the cathedral thing, right? It's the idea of cultural hegemony. What Andrew is, he, what are two words? Creepy and dangerous. He never says wrong, now does he? Right? And so, this is not only, this is a manifestation, this is an academic setting, but it's academic and cultural hegemony. This is the idea of, of, uh, of culture, right? So, his sister, who will be real later on, um, is very much a, a symbolization of sure, the broader yes. culture. Yeah, ex right. explicitly. You know, yeah, terminally yeah. online. And I mean, uh, and Anand mm -hmm. says as much. Right. Yes, they're both very online, but she's Tumblr and like K-pop, and he's well Reddit right now. <laughs> back when Reddit was pseudo based. Um, so he's fighting because he's low status. We're not supposed to. I don't. I didn't root for him. I had very. I was very critical of him up to this point. I I did not get a Spencer vibe out of him at all. I, uh, he's 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 much new mechanical. I was filled with criticism with him before this, but then with this, my my interpretation changed so drastically changed, where you're looking at him, and the thing is, he walked into there like a parody character, like he was Patrick Bateman, or he was a Michelle um, Hol Welbeck Holbeck. character, and he came out of that basement. Uh oh, well back, well back. Sorry, um, and he walked out of that basement. He walked out of that basic a Job. The story became a Job. This was, this was the story of Job. This was the Grand Inquisitor scene from Brothers Karamazov, and this scene was the two plus two equals five scene from 1984. This scene, this entire book, is one big crocodile humor joke. Where, you know, if you're the cultural hegemony, you could say something as a conspiracy theorist and say it is a real conspiracy. If you're not a cultural hegemonist I, and you don't have status in the cultural hegemony. I think you're in the Matrix, Gabe. I think the, 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 the afterword, which I don't want to get into just yet because we te yes, we've dude, technically dude, only done afterword, chapter afterword one so insane. far. And then you've jumped into chapter four. So we're like, and a few other things. But the, oh, the, is, I'm so no, I'm sorry. It's fine, I'm sorry. But the, the afterword. It it's the opposite. Like he is his no, the no, author like, himself yeah. is is framing it within the larger. It's an, it's an anti manifesto. Yeah, it was the anti manifesto. He's literally. I guess let's just fucking do it. Let's talk about the afterward. Yeah, we're yeah okay In okay. Let's let's get let's get through the afterward. Okay, so yeah, so Eric's on friend killed himself. Bad choice. Well, uh, and then yeah. and essentially he he was you know he was unaware of his friend's pain and the uh you know the frustrations that he was feeling and essentially this book was was written to try to like get into his friend's head and show people in a similar situation that there's a a path towards uh you know not that the there's light. light. He, he yeah. uses the light in the yeah. dark. If you're in a dark yeah. pit, there's light. Yeah. Show them the light at the at the top of the well. So, so truly, in in my opinion, that scene was someone who is object who is seen as more successful with women, more successful in the lab. Uh, yeah. telling Broader Anon society. directly, yeah, who is more functional in society, directly telling Anon that down this path madness lies. And, and, <laughs> and you, 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 Gabe, friend, buddy, bro, you, you are taking the opposite tack here. Yeah. So he uses the line, because this is what I want yeah. to say. This is the thesis I was trying to get about the afterward. The, he, he says that. The, this is part of the quote, sorry, quote unquote, the de radicalization project, as in the broader. This is Davos daddy language. I want to be very clear. This is, this is, I want to de radicalize you, dear reader. And this is one of my 
big issues with the book. And so I just want to be totally clear, Gabe. I think your interpretation is really interesting as always and really cool and special, but you gotta, you have to acknowledge the afterword where he, AR, ARX is, has a really clear point of view. He's, he's more normie, normie core than we are. Yeah. This, and, is, uh, this, this, the, this could have been titled touch grass, except antelope Hill already yeah. got that. So <laughs> we had to call it uh, inside. Yeah. <laughs> no, true. That is, see, the afterward is crazy, right? Because if it's an anti manifesto and this is not a weird game he's playing, then it fails. If this is a weird meta text thing, which is there are two versions of the text, it, he's into meta things. This is no. obviously a meta thing. Then it's either brilliant. See, here's the thing: he is he is right, but he's punished for it. You're Based saying you're saying Anon is right. God. To be clear, yeah, he's Job. He is Job. I love God, despite he is tortured. <laughs> oh, God, is it, <laughs> he is tortured by God. This is Nutcranker all over again. I really thought I was going to be the contrarian no, one. No, no. On this. <laughs> He's 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 deeply hurt. He's flawed, and I would agree with him that he's too autistic. He's too mechanical. Yeah. And here's the secret, right? Andrew is right. He says, "Dude, if you want to go out there, just go get some mm-hmm. pussy," right? That's what he says to him, basically. And what does Ant, um he does it? He does. He actually learns the basic system of algorithms, right? Which is learning modules. What he wanted to do is like a Chat GPT learning modules where you can stuff up the information have a dialogue tree but so, he's literally he's he's he do? doing he sex extraction at the end of the day i mean i don't let's we can let's go back into the plot in terms of sequence of events i do want to get in just before we get into the seduction item just to try and get a little bit back in order there's the club there's the club chapter i want to commit suicide there's a the chapter where the neighbor is introduced because that's gonna be important later um thomas he mentions, you know, his neighbor named Thomas, whose wife gets railed all the time by a new guy. He hasn't seen Thomas in a while. And then chapter three, there's the, our introduction to the fight aspect of this, the sort of MMA aspect of the book. Yes, which Actually, we haven't, which we MMA. have not, which we have not mentioned at all yet. However, yeah, it's kickboxing. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, which we have not mentioned at all yet. But the fight scenes are actually f- fucking bangers. Yeah, they're they're real Fantastic. good. Like, yeah, you know, very good with it. With, yeah, with the, the, technical pros the quote that I read earlier might make you think that, oh, this guy could never write action. But in in fact, his, his action sequences are, are strong. They're good. Yeah. So. And they're kind of spread out. Like, it's, I feel like there's, um, what is there? There's this, there's this one. There's like one or two other sparrings. There's the, the bite the curb <laughs> scene. Well, and the there's, the, there's this yeah. ass, ass scene. Um, yes, they're pretty interspersed. Korean history X. Um, yeah, yeah. So no, I, yeah, I agree. The fight scenes were were always consistently good. Um, one or two felt a little disconnected, like the sparring. I was like, why are we even sparring now? But they were they're always interestingly written. Um, okay, and then sorry, Gabe, and then I, unless you guys have anything else on the fight, yeah, let's get into I guess at, well, after the intro. Well, fighting is very. Or do you want to do you want to talk fighting a little bit, uh, or we can talk about the sort of the more oh, middle we'll, chunk? We'll get it to it. Yes, that, actually, that's an introduce fucking Jason at the very least. Yeah. we can get to the fighting at least. Sure. Yeah, him and Jason meet up at actually that might be chapter four or five, or maybe, maybe that's the fight. Yeah, I think it is that fight. Yeah, yeah. So, so him and Jason, Anon and Jason are um, are sparring in chapter three. We meet Jason, the uh, yeah, his, his Korean best friend, who's also an MMA or sorry kickboxing. Um, and Jason is sort of the, yeah, I guess so early the, the foil, he's sort of the, the Genghis Khan, so, you know, gets all the sex he wants. He, uh, he does he even yeah. come. He has, he does drugs all the time. He has sex all he wants. Yeah. He fights people who piss him off. Like the dude is yeah. a zero self control. Yeah. He is Korean giga chat. Mm. Yes. Korean giga chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. no, he is though. He's he's the fully fully actualized, uh, fully actualized guy. Yeah, but uh, his relationship with Anon is very interesting because he theory he's a theory cell too, right? That's some of the pseudo unbelievableness of it, which I is that he's very much a theory cell and they debate, they agree with ninety percent of things except the free will question, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, other than that, he's the one who really believes in the dual mating hypothesis that women are very hypergamous. He's like, you gotta realize, dude, that Elizabeth, 
She loves fucking the guy who isn't you. She's just getting raw dog so hard right now, bro. For every woman, there's a ladder of men, and they're always trying to climb to the top. They're always trying to maximize, right? And then, of course, Anon says it's a ladder made out of penises. Yes. Which is very evocative imagery. dick ladder. And, and the humor is very... Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, the humor is very dry. It's not very open, like in, in, um, in Nutcranker. And uh, so the Anon... He loves fighting. He loves Jason. He keeps on saying, like, oh, it's because he's sterilized. He got his, yet again, hauntology infects his entire novel. Jason's father was a typical rooftop Korean. Direct quote from the book, by the way. A rooftop Korean, a black guy came in, shotgunned him. Then his mother married a white guy who forced him to watch the footage over and over and over again to torture him for some reason. And then uh, he gets, uh, he's super violent. And then he criticizes psychology. He's like, oh, this is all through childhood trauma. But in reality, he has the warrior gene. And he was aggressive before this trauma. In reality, the genetic, behavioral genetics outweigh psychology. Right? And because he has the warrior gene, which is, uh, I actually don't know if the reality of this. But he hides, the, he actually pins up the, uh, the results of the warrior gene on top of the bed so he can show chicks, yeah, man, I'm an MMA fighter. I'm going to be built for it. And then fucks the bitches. Right? He exclusively fucks white girls. Right. Um, but he is permanently in the moment and he's into philosophy much more because yet again, Anon is a purely mechanical thinker. There's one chapter when he gets philosophical, which I think was very out of place. He should have deleted that chapter because throughout the entire thing, Anon should not know the name of Carl Jung. He named up Carl Jung a few chapters after this, which is very bizarre. It's, again, the whole racism thing and the whole him being a, he should have picked a cliche, which is the stem cell Anon, uh, stem cell incel and focus on that aspect, not the race aspect. The race aspect is very half baked, very insincere. I didn't believe it for one second. It's well, very and, 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 it's, and is ultimately revealed to be a cope, right? So, oh, by the way, by yes. by the way, it is chapter twenty nine um, when he is standing on the when Anan is standing on the pier. Um, he it's flipping through the images in my phone. I land on the last remaining picture I have of Elizabeth, allowing myself the pleasure of a secret of. A secret nostalgia, I rest my gaze on the ethnically contoured physiognomy of her strange but attractive phenotype, noting the ample strength of her high set cheekbones and the perfect symmetry of her epicanthic folds and the large almond shaped ovals of her eyes, and, if I am being entirely honest, the vaguely neotenous buccal fat that puffs into the youthful bloom of her cheeks. I note also the small points of genuine individuation, the red ring piercing her eyebrow, imparting a flair for the aesthetic. Her hair, naturally black, but dyed bright blonde, its fibers shining with the vibrant intensity of an expressivity that is so often absent in the members of her grouping. <laughs> so, so he, he's, yeah, he spends the whole time, like, and it's a cope. It's a cope. The whole, the whole racist thing is a cope, basically, because he got, because re- he got, because oh, oh, yeah, he got the, rejected the folds, by an Asian right? Yeah, epicanthic folds. Yeah, she's Asian. And he mentions individuation oh, and ex- expressivity I'm... are absent in members of her grouping. It's all a, it's all a cope. But just from that one breakup, oh. that seems like a pretty dramatic step to be like. No, it's his first girlfriend. Yeah. Also, also when the book starts, now they I'm a had, racist. When the when the, brick, when the when the books. Well, okay. Well, maybe, but like, you know. Yeah, I, I if when the book starts, they had like just broken up or something like that. It was like a couple of weeks, and they had not mm-hmm. dated for that. And they had, and they had and he not tries dated a nice that guy long routine. anyway. He gives her flowers. So, <laughs> like it's it's literally just this guy's got one itis for a girl that he saw for a little bit. So damn, just like me. Well, he has an explanation for this. Yeah, well, he says on the internet it is said that all women are the same. While our fungible fungibility as human beings may well be a fact of biology. No man binds the universal, only the particular. The photo is deleted, right? So he develops an actual realization for the particular. He he stops being an abstract statistic fag, and actually learning to realize that there's individual pockets of importance rather than just the abstract. Well, yeah, ultimately. So after he touches grass, and uh, (laughs) the the thing is, the the full novel is about him touching grass. Right, so let's, let's revert back to where we were. So the first scene, the club, uh, jerking off of hauntology of dead children, which represents a semen. He goes to, with his friend, who's a boxer, Jason, the Korean American right. History X, um, 
who is his best friend, who's also a theory cell. And uh, he sends him studies he finds. Like, he gives a sermon. He's described as a sermon about how human perception is a lie. It's not really like a matrix. Like, every human being is a bubble. And the te if you notice, the font on this is very big and bulky. It's a very important font. Like he gives a study. And he, it's I think it's important to be to the theme of the story because it doesn't the ending doesn't work unless you bring up the whole bubble theory the mate there's no one big matrix everyone has the an, our own personal bubble of a matrix of multiple connections and sometimes these bubbles overlap with one another in people's lives but basically you have your family your intuitions your theories your facts your information you your idea of reality is a chain of associations and these chains of associations make a bubble a limited bubble and when you get into another person or you talk to another person those bubbles overlap temporarily when you interact with each other's lives so and i think that's overall the point or a part of the novel because we never see anything else outside the anon's bubble right but we see him experiencing other people's bubbles i mean the, the emotional catharsis at the end is when he's forced to for the first time actually understand a woman a woman becomes a deuteragonist in a sense at near the end um very bizarrely and oddly enough the most moral woman here uh, uh, there, there's like um lawful neutral which is the most of the women here <laughs> lawful evil God. his sister his sister's pure lawful evil and then you got Gabe, again chaotic. AR, she, the sister is supposed to be the voice of reason. She's evil to well, you. She's also she's also you she are. is a normie. No. Like she she's not yeah. yeah she's not stepping out stepping out. And he is no, getting long I, I actually but her the advice she actually gives but he, but here's him the, is not bad. And she's clearly trying to relate to him as a person, despite the the uh, internal monologue of a non. Yeah. No, yeah. I see. Here's the thing: when you actually research the text, <laughs> and the thing is, I'll I will break your brain with this. I'll break your yeah. brain with it. Y'all will y'all will see her for what she is, right? Um, but that's I later on. I did find she her annoying sister. for the record. Yes. But I, but I know because yeah, she's like a real chick. She's well written in that way. Like she really does feel like a big sister who is talking down to him. No, no, he's very good with dialogue. Mm. He's very good with dialogue, actually. Yeah. When, when uh, he's trying to hit the girls. And we'll get at the hitting of the girls. A lot of the chunk of this is him learning to be a human being. What he wants to do with AI, oddly enough, he still proves his theory, but just doing it through raw dog human experiences. It's a I trial mean, and error. He, learning his, modules His conversations of are like an LLM. <laughs> like, it's it's mm -hmm. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the chatbot reset when he does the pickup, and the chick is like, "Oh, I just saw you hitting on a girl across the aisle. Like, do you do this often?" And mm -hmm. dude, it was so it, that was nutcracker tier, like good cringe. Right? I I felt it. Oh God! And he and he, and he right clicks in his brain about his personality folder. <laughs> Yet again, he thinks of his body as a yeah. computer. Yeah, his yeah, and, uh, is, he, it, he is constantly... it a little embarrassing to have your your and... memory palace be a Windows file system? Like. <laughs> <laughs> It's organized. It's organized. It's I organized. guess there's that. Yeah. Oh, and he's mega shape rotator. He's actually a big shape rotator. You can play Tetris on his brain. Right. So he's actually a very good shape rotator. But um, let's let's get. We'll get to that. We're getting all to the juicy parts. And again, the novel does not get good. In my opinion, it gets okay. Like you know, da 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 da. da it gets whatever. Right. It's when the uh, you already know what my Plato cave of this novel is. It, it, it's Anon's cave. Right, that scene from forward, moving forward, it gets really juicy, and I'm like a hawk reading the text, uh, trying to like realize what the text is talking about. But um, so we are at he hangs out with Jason, his Jason is his best friend. He agrees with him for the most part, but just wants him to let go and have sex, you know, literally have sex in cell. <laughs> That's Jason's whole philosophy, and Jason is the second character to have a character arc. He's actually he actually has the most cliche character arc or the most obvious character arc. Out of uh, any character, really. For sure. And then after Jason, is the chapter we already covered of um, Andrew meeting up in the in the lab basement. And on the way to the lab, he sees a guy who's a uh, you know more attractive than the first doppelganger, and uh, he just hates him for yes, existing. Yes, doppelgangers. Which is kind of an interesting, interesting scene. Um, maybe we can just jump in here with some with my my pacing comment. I don't know where else I would fit it. There's basically like a long chunk where he's like hitting on women back and forth. Uh, there's 
some other stuff happening. I I just I did feel like the first hundred pages or so of this, it felt like it could have been cut down to fifty or something like that. Like it did feel it felt a bit aimless. There were there um, were a couple of the yeah, repeated. I mean there were a couple that, you know, could have been a montage. <laughs> but mm. yeah. It, yeah, it felt it like grinding liter- in an RPG. It, and it literally it, it's yeah, like watching said, some guy play Skyrim. Said as much. Like it was Yeah, but unfor- unfortunately, like despite the, the women being slightly different, right? I mean, it was definitely like I I, I feel I felt like it built tedium and uh and like frustration in a way that was actually um that was actually on theme like every single time mm-hmm. uh and it's very realistic but the it, it built it, it built that up in a way that was that was very thematic but it also um i mean i i still like didn't feel it didn't feel difficult to push through for me because i the the prose is is pretty strong so I was I was sort of Very vibing strong. on the uniqueness of the way that the story was told and I was not like particularly you know wanting him to get on with the with the nutting already. So yeah. um and I would I would also say that like it, it does come up like you kind of like need the need the the pad for that arc. And once you get past, and I think you, I think you're probably going to say this. Once you get past the midpoint, there's it. It really accelerates quickly, and a lot of stuff starts yeah. to happen mm-hmm. after he, after he, after he grinds up them them levels. So yeah, I don't know. It was not overly harsh because it was very tedious. It was all technically really well written, and so it was. Ne- it was never. It's never criticism of something that was not good. It was more just pacing and flow like there, there was like three or so aspects of my concern with it. i'll just lay out in the most autistic way possible so at the scene level the first like 100 or so pages yeah it it there was some repetitiveness um but then i think it was compounded because of the paragraph level as we mentioned before the pov is is highly techno computerized and so you know it can be a little overwhelming that one didn't bother me as much. The other thing is also there. there's these long diatribes into essay and hypothetical scenarios. So, for example, with the, I think it's the, when they go to the bar for the first time with Jason, there is like two or three like mini essays, t- totally internal, that happen between like sips of beer or walking up flights of stairs. And for me, that just it's just a taste thing it's not wrong but for me that that just really jarred the pacing where like you just go on this diatribe where he's like barry Seibert at all wrote a paper you know somewhat related to the to this the fact this woman looked at me like this it actually mean and, and it goes into this some study to me it just that was way more prominent in the first half too or the first third sorry and then i noticed after that actually the the flow of it was different like there wasn't as many of those types of um highly technical scientific whatever you call it basically essays like mini essays in in scene right. uh i think you started yeah. to break them up into many chapters actually i think that is pro- I, I, mm-hmm. uh, like a, th- a theoretical idea or concept like uh you know wh- whether atoms have consciousness what is consciousness i think it has a lot of jason but also sometimes just by himself like he goes on a theory cell rant like it's it very much just sporadically collections and clusters of essays yeah. throughout, and they're all good essays. But I just it would it, to me it was very frustrating. It was well, I, like I really moved slow to the first like third of the book, and then it I really picked up and I read the rest in like you know a couple days. But and I think it was just like it was just those chapters for me. I would like lose. I would just lose track of what he was going on. Um, so anyway, all I have to say that that was my. Yeah, sort of, as sort we of go like, through this sort of section, like when he meets when he meets sneakers by channeling what is it Barry from How I Met Your Mother, <laughs> and also yeah, Three Hundred Days right. of Summer. Remember, because she looks like Zoe, Zoe whatever, much of yeah. face. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I uh, see, but that's the, the the sneakers thing. If you notice it, like the dialogue is he's learning to t- he reads like he reads her very well. 
What fucks her over with sneakers is the digital. The digital comes back and bites his ass because he didn't have to send text. But he's learning to read facial, like the whole thing. Oddly enough, him approaching women is working. He's learning to, he, le he even says, sometimes you need to learn to shut the fuck up. He's learning not to be autistic, right? He's an anti-incel. Right, because he doesn't do the whole thing. You just word vomit. Every guy, you know, who's an incel or like like us, you know, you learn. Listen, when a girl asks, I have, you I what have you're never had the problems. You like this. leave it for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. Okay, whatever. Fucking boomer ass millennial. All right, as a zoomer, right? That that scene was very, very, very um, uh, familiar, <laughs> and uh, the joking and how you gotta learn to joke properly. Uh, it's it. You know, it, it brought me back you, to my early pubescence. Were, were very, you? Uh, very, are you nice a little? Uh, are, are you on the spectrum? You got? You got your? <laughs> you got? Are you on the prowl? You got the tism? Uh, just a little? Uh, yeah, I got master morality, right? <laughs> so did, so did Nietzsche, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a blonde beast. I'm so, how right, how bad uh, is it, doctor? No, it, I'm sorry, your son. Your son is turbo based <laughs> and has the master morality, so he'll never be normal. <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> but he won't be afraid to ask the hard-hitting pussy questions. How wet is it? Will How you stick in the moisture exactly? thermometer? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, your son is a stone cold Zarathustrian. There's nothing. Can do. I did. I wanted that qualifier in there though, just because I feel like we're we are scattered, and I think that's one of the reasons we're so scattered in terms of covering this, at least for me. Because so much of this stuff it happens and you get these little tiny interstitial essays and then, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's in chunks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very, um, it's a bit of a messy book. It's not, that is not to say bad, but it's not in a clean, um, very clean structure, like, uh, three act. Very clean I, three and he act. admits so in the afterward, right? Cause the, if the book started as a collection of essays, him trying yeah. to deal with the grief and whatever. Right, it's it was based on a collection of essays, and you can feel that very yeah. much. I don't mind it. I like watching pageless anime shows or something like this. Like it's comfy. Like I sometimes you want a movie as, or as, a film as you or kids something say, about a pace. It is a vibe. It's, it's a vibe novel, mm -hmm. and I fucked with it quite a bit. But even I, at times, it started getting grating. Like yet again, when a in, in later half of the novel, right near the end, that's where he inserts the him getting into debates with Reddit yeah, people on Reddit, like and he he comes to that. Yes, this, that should have been early in the novel. That that really grinded in my gears. I'm like, this is so out of place here because he's developed so much as a character already, right? Because him, his experience with women, he learns to talk to women. He generally does. He gets, um, you know, the Pottery Barn. But it's in an where, extractive uh, way. Pottery... Like that's his problem. Like he's not. It's it's purely in a. Um, I mean, this is what you know why our buddy Andrew was so repulsed. It's not. It's not an, an actual genuine interaction. Like he's literally he's literally downloading from movies and repeating lines and seeing what response he gets. And so he is like an AI in that sense. He's just like regurgitating and seeing what works through trial and error. I uh, see. I knew that would be a, a, that's a talking point. I knew that I have one scene that was very, it's with sneakers actually. Um, it's a beautiful scene where he starts fantasizing like a fuck boy uh, about having this wonderful scene where Partway through, I'll recite it right now. Partway through, I realized that she looks like a brown-haired Zooey de Chanel, flipping a toggle that forces a series of involuntary images onto a screen in my mind, degrading my focus. And listen to this, right? The two of us holding hands in a park on a bright summer day, a lazy post-coital afternoon spent flipping through vinyls in a record store, a picturesque nighttime kiss under the fading glow of amber streetlights lit underneath the moonlight sky. These wicked thoughts threaten to warp the surface of my alpha male projection. And I quickly revert to emergency procedures. And he has like a shit joke where he sees her take a shit via her kidneys and stuff like this. But yeah. emotions, the thing is, he's a mechanical. The emotion, the spirit comes in. This is why, oddly enough, Andrew's criticism of him is semi-true. But it's it's... It's the poison of the cultural, the, the sultan of society, right? The mind virus. The, the, the cultural hegemony trying to be afraid of the invisible hand. Darwin, the ghost of Darwin, right? Nature is knocking on the cathedral's door, right? But it's true that Anon does not have a spirit. He's the, he's the tin man without a heart, right? He's developing just by interacting with women naturally, even in his own autistic way. He, just through sheer trial and error, these feelings, these sensations. I don't think he is. Like he doesn't want to fuck he her. He, think he, of the the girl, 
the one with the giant clit he tries to have sex with. Um, I can't remember her name. Chloe? Was that Chloe? The one, the, the one that he unsuccessfully he went flaccid on. Like that one. Oh yes, that's because when you yeah, and he's like yeah. And, no, that's not Chloe. And, and the one before that, his his porn induced um, erectile dysfunction. Yeah, his porn induced erectile dysfunction. It's partly porn. It's also because he never wore condom, right? Because kids, pro tip for all our youngsters who are listening to us: before you have sex for the first time, please, for the love of God, wear a condom for like a, a whole day, <laughs> for or at least what? A part of a day. Make, go make lunch or something. No, you don't remember, like, dude, wearing a condom the first time is very uncomfortable. Right, we'll fuck here's my right advice: now. don't wear condoms. Don't wear condoms. Unironically, Raw-o-ly. yeah, True. You're fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. We're for, we're we are for yeah. killing the Yeah, if she's really into right? it, no, it's she'll just because, say it's yeah. because it Trust me. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. Shout out. So, oh no, no, the girl I'm thinking of is anime girl. I can't remember her name. Oh, the, she, the he, five. He they the go out to dinner. Of... Yeah, the f- five, and he takes her back to his place. Then she realizes what he's doing, and then he's she's like, oh. Is that what this is? And he just like stands there like a retard. Yeah, it is. And he walks away. And yeah. That this happens before that happens yeah, before that this was, one. That was the first time. Yeah. First time he had a positive hit. But both of those two, I, there was no against Gabe's point. There was no deeper connection there. Like it was literally, especially the first one. He was just trying to get a get his nut off, and then he didn't even bother to say, "Oh, well, actually, let's just go grab one more drink and then try again." Like he's so he was so, yeah, not actually connected an emotional level with either of them yeah yeah he- well because he's trying to establish a connection with womankind in no. general and because the reason why i cite this is because it bubbles up what is he he's fantasizing about going to a vinyl store with her and having a genuine nighttime kiss with her he's having a fuck boy he wants to listen to like dismiss with her dude is it's starting to bubble up I mean, he's still it's like it's still a foreign idea that's why he says he needs to like put it out of his mind but the idea of genuine romance he's developing as a character it's starting to seep in a little by little with this i i mean so he i do not think that he was actually he actually learned anything from women until he was ready to like give up i think i think yeah, that the, the this, point at the which he gave thing. up his his entire project and so, so I mean, I don't know if we should jump all the way forward. Uh, Just do it. This is this. Is, we're we're messing. We're, we're so messy place. right now. All right. Okay. So here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna yeah, I'm gonna warp speed that, through this a little bit to to catch up. Like, if people want it, they they should read it. We're not gonna tell you the whole story. Um, but he he gets with he almost gets with a thought. And she is like, all right, I'm ready to get dick down. And then he's just soft. And she's like, oh, well, you're fucking useless. And she kicks him out. Right. So he. he no, they, no, they watch. No, they no, watch no. They drive. start. They start. Yeah, they, yeah <laughs> that's they true. They start. They oh, yeah, start watching a movie. They start watching a movie. I should buy this. Yeah, I should buy that jacket. And then like after 15 <laughs> minutes. This yeah. And then after 15 <laughs> minutes, she's like, yeah, I got to work early. So, you know, leave. So he leaves, um, and you know, you know, he cries, et cetera. Um, he has an argument with his sister. Uh, she's really worried about him, uh, and rightly so, because he's planning to kill himself. And uh, no, no, that part is yeah. pseudo justified. And um, and he sees her as as uh, uh, he continues to see everyone purely instrumentally. Uh, and in his most Grunhauerian uh, way, he constantly, and we should also say, constantly refers to Jason uh, with this like this refrain where he says something nice about Jason and says, uh, you know, it's the cornerstone of our friendship, the very reason, you know, it, it exists. Um because he can't fully like, because he can't fully commit to being friends with an Asian guy, <laughs> so he he'll constantly like recite this litany of things that he likes about Jason, and then use the use the cat and then In use fact, the catchphrase, <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, sure, a bunch of a bunch of like whatever it is, like random things about him, just like if someone said, oh, well, what do you like about your friend, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, uh. 
I don't know, we both really like uh, fat asses. <laughs> like, and we'll, we could talk about it in a good way when we're out, right? Like, there are a million different random small things that, like, will constitute what a real friendship is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he's, that's that's his ad hoc hope. Like, he ad hoc hopes, like, oh, it's because, you know, he's a warrior or anything like that. But, you know, it's revealed that he would put his life on a line for him because he saved him. Yeah, when he's well, and he also he also did, you know, even in the one of the early scenes, in the early fight scene, um, he stopped Jason from uh, basically going to prison for the rest of his life. <laughs> Uh, from going from not beating from <laughs> actually just murdering the guy rather than beating the shit out of him, so um, right. Let's see. So he gets through the he gets through the thought, um, and he has several like strong conversations, uh, uh, most especially with sneakers, and gets ghosted. And it's coming up to it's like the day before his his birthday where he's going to um inject zrp-0 57 into his neck causing his brain to expand to twice its size so that if someone were to tap him on the head his entire skull would explode strange side effect that we didn't mention earlier <laughs> but that was established it's like the one <laughs> really science fiction uh, aspect of this that's that's I, I, I kind of yeah, it's, it's the most, I kind it's of the most wish I kind of wish that that had been a bigger feature of that because if if ARX Han had leaned into like ZRP dash O fifty seven in the in the storyline and had it be more relevant I kind of feel like he could have gotten some sort of Vonnegut uh, vibe going on there like it, it, it's definitely possible to have incorporated it in such a way because it's funny because like it's this stuff that if if ingested incorrectly will like it, it can either make your dick big or if it's ingested incorrectly it literally causes your head to explode like that is the type of like silly trade-off that that Vonnegut would have would have would have written um Right, it's both tragic and, and also sad. Well, and that, funny. That was like a sound and that reminds funny. you of some Wallace. Like, <laughs> so yeah, the pre- cost of the hubris of a man to to even c- contemplate Worth shoving it. this in his body. Yeah, yeah. So it's the day before, and he and he pretty much gives up. Um, his lifeline is had previously slightly been his sister, um, and she they had had an argument, um, basically about his erratic behavior uh and he kind of went mask off about some of his evo psych stuff just a little to her and um uh they they basically were not they, they are we talking they about the last talking. conversation they had yeah yeah so this is but the, is, but oh uh, wow but they were not but they were not talking at that point um and jason was out of the country uh, realizing that he could uh, slay Asian puss actually because he was visiting, <laughs> he was visiting Asia. <laughs> so, um, uh, the and so he's sort of connecting with his ethnos. Uh, yeah, his home island. Yeah, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally actually. Um, he just basically walks into a bar and starts a fight with a random guy. And beats the shit out of him, like he, uh, who is part of the Aryan yeah, Brotherhood. He just by like the way. starts a fight, um, starts a fight, and and it pretty much it gets broken up. But he pretty much wins the fight. He goes outside and he's like having a cigarette, and he's all bloody. And this girl approaches him, and they just talk. <laughs> And he doesn't, and and he, and there's shit and, going oh, on. Yeah, his pants. he had shat his pants, <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> so he's in the worst state that he's been essentially in the in the entire novel. He's completely broken down, hit rock bottom. He's like gonna go home and cause his head to explode. And this girl approaches him uh, at his lowest point, and like they have a real conversation, and make plans to to meet up later actually i have a i have a something that's been like nagging me for this whole book like what what's up with the theme of red-pilled women like you notice 
one of his early dates talks about cia art funding or maybe this is her and then another one talks about mk ultra like in more detail and he's bored by it like there's this thing with the women in this book i have no idea if it's just like a like an easter egg or like a cheeky comment well no it's 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 very remember cia stuff was very considered leftist back in the day uh, like uh, about how white men cia destabilized southern america and stuff like that yeah and that kind of thing. Because um, one of the early girls he talks, he talks about Alan Moore, about how a lot of the Marvel storybooks or comic books are like patriarchal. And like, uh, oh, how the first Iron Man, because this is 2012, right? So she's like, you know, the first Iron Man was like a very decent constructed bushes, military, military industrial complex. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. The wokeness is in its embryonic state. In, uh, during Maybe it's just funny because I've never heard a woman it, it, bring up it, either it, of those do, topics. It do, be, it do be true, though. <laughs> It do be true, though. <laughs> do, it do be do, yeah. Don't don't let the glowies you know. tell you otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did we cover the um, the ass rape flashback? Because that was not. We did not of... cover the ass rape. Ass rape. You want you want to take you want to take that one? <laughs> as you, as, I don't want I don't want to take that school. one for the team. But uh, <laughs> that's the origins of his relationship with uh, with Jason. With, uh, uh, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Bas- basically. It, it happens, I think, about two thirds of the way through. You get this reveal that he was. This would actually it it stretched the bounds of plausibility for me a little bit because essentially there's a there's a schoolyard brawl. He insults someone's Pokemon cards. Um, they're in seventh grade or something, and then in in the span of however many minutes at recess, he gets like an all like knockout drag out fight with four boys. He gets like bent over, and like the guy puts a stick up his butt for a second. Yeah. Then he, then the tables turn. Him and Jason, Jason comes in swinging, and then they're like knocking these guys out, and then they have them down on the ground, and then he's like trying to squeeze the guys, the kids' eyeballs, and then all, so all this is happening in, like this unbelievably in, like, five, brutal like, five... like fight between twelve year olds or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is this is like a fucking Kill Bill no. fight scene, but within like a within enough time that no teacher saw this or no one, and there's an audience of like thirty plus kids implied. They mentioned that everyone's watching this happen. Um, a little bit insane. Well, uh, the teacher was taking a smoke break. The teacher was taking a smoke break That's what on the other said. side of the the planet. Like, where, like yeah. how much how much noise was going on? Uh, he says the dumpsters. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just being, I'm being cheeky. Uh, it, it was no, but that's a great scene. That's a fantastic scene because yeah. it redeems uh, in Anna in a weird way. Because he gets that flashback from sparring with a sloth. Yeah. He's sparring. He he knows how to fight. A he knows how to fight. He's willing to get beat up. And also, if you notice when he when he loses and when he, uh, the sloth is kicking his ass, he's very much gracious to him he's not vindictive if it was spencer he would have been like oh this damn slaw this ignorant savage barbarian has uh, rough fools me and cheated whatever fuck right no no anon's very he's very actually forgiving and he's like you know what yeah he yeah, yeah, an honorable square. fight right he's willing to suffer pain yes the, uh, the idea of honor fucks with both jason and him to have this weird very systematic system of morality where like um jason fuses it with zen buddhism and like a pseudo ethno religion Right with its idea of fairness, because he's like, I didn't do it for you. I didn't save you because of you. I saved you because it was just unfair. Four on one is retarded. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there was a to right. your point and, of dissociation. I think it was all in second person as well. That whole um, it's mm-hmm, a better yep. part of a chapter. I want to say, I'm sorry, Gabe. You were you had something else on on the ass rape. Oh, oh no, uh, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, the ass rape. I think he should have. Uh, he go. He does the timeline thing. He's like, oh well, there's one timeline where I did get the so that my ass. I'm like, I'm sorry. He should have. It that should have been canonical. He should have had the stick shoved up his ass. Objectively, he, I think it, he it, did. It's much more. <laughs> no, it didn't. Uh, uh, it he he bucked him. Yep. It, it can, canonically, why he said that's an alternate timeline. He does the whole branching timeline thing again. Um, but he does still try to kill him. The kid actually does try to kill him. He, the, the stick. He tries to go for right. his fucking eyeballs with his stick, and then tries to stab him in the fucking throat. Like he even says, this motherfucker's trying to kill me. It was actually very yeah, brutal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so like, you realize Anon is not the stare. That's what I said. This is not the great incel novel, right? I, incels would hate this. The, the, the basically the down bad the one that go to stereotype because it's unrealistic. This this Anon is actually trying to better himself. 
He's willing to fight. He's not a coward. He helps when Jason gets in that kid scene. He helps him fight off the bullies. They team up. Yeah. yeah. He's not afraid to fight. He's well, not afraid to feel pain. Well, he's actually very much. Hulabek are already wrote uh, whatever. <laughs> so that that is the great Intel novel. Uh, but this is oh, true. this is the best novel named Incel. And there, and there are a few. True. <laughs> there there's are a few. Kind of a, there's a few. Yeah. There are a few. Right. And and you, you kind of you develop a warmth for him. And I think this novel is one of the novels you have to reread twice or reread well reread once. Right. Uh, I mean, all novels should be reread completely as a Nabokovian because you don't understand the full novel unless you have all the parts. But this especially, uh, this uh, this novel really. The Anon character is not a caricature. He does develop quite a bit, both in his interactions with women and with in his fights. Like he, he thinks fighting is beautiful because it's an evolutionary kind of thing, right? It's it's an entropy. It's a self exciting circuit of like health, right? The the idea of the self exciting circuit yeah. kind of thing plays into it. But um that scene is very important actually to him who he is as a character. And I think that scene, when you contrast the relationship with his sister, it's like a you know, that 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 you know, again the the two biggest dialogue scenes are the Andrew scene, which is the first time where you you get the I know for a fact who the population who reads this who have way too different popul who read this will have a different interpretations. The ending dialogue with the sister that will your your entire reading of who Anon is, who this book is, who Han is will change based on the sister dialogue at the end is probably the cornerstone of this novel. Because uh, in a very odd way, um, the sisters never portray positively. Um, the, uh, well, go finish the recap. We'll just get us to the end, and then we can bounce between the two ends. So he he meets up with this girl who you know it's last last possible chance. Um, but he's so shell shocked at this point that he doesn't he doesn't run game at all. So he just talks to her, and he's like, "Holy shit!" She's like he finally sees another person as something other than instrumental in a, in a, in a person sees a person in a way that is not instrumental. Um, and mm -hmm. he, they go to have sex and he, uh, again has issues making it happen, but, uh, she is not viewing him in an instrumental way. Like, like the first thought, and it's very yeah, sweet and, scene, actually. and she's like a a caring and generous lover and uh and and it happens right and it's and it's short and it's kind of whatever but it but it happens and they have and they part uh as friends i guess you could say um and Anand does not seem to think that this is something that will happen again, but I, it doesn't actually, I don't know. I don't know why someone would necessarily think that. So I actually had the same thought that it was, um, I think it's from his PUA training yeah. or whatever that he, in his framework. But I had the same thought. I was like, it seemed like she actually like liked, liked you. Him so in yeah. A dating way. Yeah. Yeah. So why <laughs> would you just assume that? Yeah. Anyway. Oh no, he's but he's butt hurt because the average amount. He's like, congratulations at my age, I have one. I had, but the average of my age is like four point five. He he he, stat, he like placed baseball statistics with it, and he realized he hits the hedonistic treadmill problem basically. What? Like he feels this euphoria of like, oh my god, this is the most sweetest gesture I've ever happened to me. And then we once he gets once yeah. he, post nut clarity, the morning, he realizes like, mm -hmm. that's it. It's over. Well, I think because he's just—he just doesn't—he doesn't like himself. He—he he, he hasn't fixed any of the underlying problems. He—he he just built a, an obsessive fixation. You know, again, the right. data-driven death thing. It was all about hitting a metric. You know, coming up with this autistic AI bot program that he embodied <laughs> so that he could hit a number on oh, a scoreboard. Oh, Project Prometheus. Yeah, yeah. The Project Prometheus. Yes, was his version of the project from. Uh... From, uh, you know, see, Cranker. Spencer's based. He posts on three channels. He's not a Redditor. He's not a Redditor. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> that's the problem. Many things can be said about the good Grunhauer, but he's not a fucking yeah. Redditor. Grant, 2012 was a different time, but I was I still wasn't using Reddit, I'll tell you that much. Sorry, Cap. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, so, so after that, um, 
is is when he what he he speaks to his advisor um and oh yeah. uh, williams and they have who's who's but he was human biodiversity pilled actually ironically enough but he has the whole noble right eye yeah that's that's cursed information it's a it's a it's a cognito yeah. hazard um so he gives him some you know decent advice and they you know they have a they have a collegial disagreement basically um uh, and that seems very interesting because williams criticizes him he's like oh you came up with a data because he says he copied it from another um study but then anon says i actually did the uh, statistics by scratch and he's like i know uh, that's why i'm not actually like sacking you right here and there because like plagiarizing yeah. is a big deal in college and his criticism is not that Anon does not know his shit. He actually does know his shit. It's it's just he has one goofball theory. Again, the dual mating hypothesis and uh, the ethnocentrism, which is the noble lie kind of thing, where it's a, a truth that will destroy the culture. So he says you kind of have to ignore it. So it's very interesting, that scene, because it confirms, actually, that he isn't a schizo. He does kind of yeah. know his field. He's autistic about it, and he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't know why. He, any man, like, it's a Nietzschean thing. He's, he's a mechanical. He doesn't have a spirit of a dancer. He doesn't know why he's living his life. And again, the whole question of why is, like, okay, you know all the mechanics of a, of a piano. You know how a piano is constructed. You but know you the can't keyboards, play but you don't piano. know how to play yeah, any music exactly. on it. So. Yes. That's the biggest criticism. And so he does that. Then he goes out onto the pier on the evening of, or on the night that it becomes his birthday. Right. So he's, he's out on a pier. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when he, that's when he's looking through his phone and has the memory of, of Elizabeth come up and deletes that last photo. Um, he, you know, he has a letter to his sister that he's going to, you know, presumably put in the mail uh in his pocket so oh, oh he yeah, throws yeah. It into the water. sorry yeah he he does throw that into the water but i mean it i i don't know it seems like he's probably not going to deliberately stay out of touch with her but um it like he's not gonna he's accepted that they became yeah, two different yeah. things so and then there's the scene with the uh, the wife of his neighbor, which yeah, I think is he has one more beer with Jason, and then on the way back he sees right. Um, that's right. That's does right. He, she even get a name? Um, and they just talk about you well. Know, the, that's Jason that's a very. I mean, that's a super important scene, actually. The, the club, the final club scene where he he gives up on sex. He realizes like he he does he develops disgust with humanity. It's because uh, it's based. Well, you know. No, he hears the widow. He remembers her screaming, and he, he he experiences visceral mourning for the first time. And he hears her screaming in the club, and it it hurts him. It physically, he's never felt this kind of thing before, right? Because he hears her screaming in agony and mourning and crying for the first time, and activates a primal thing within him. And you know, when she gets up, he looks at all these humans, and he, he has his Victorian s disgust with humanity. He's disgusted by sex. You know, when a guy, he sees another guy try to flirt with a girl and he whispers in his ear. It's the final scene with American yeah. Psycho, basically, where he kind of just drops the mask and he says, listen, guy, sex is pointless. I've been up in that mountain. There's nothing there. Direct quote. Uh, I've been up that mountain. There's nothing there. Uh, and of course, the guy thinks he's a random schizo. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And so he vomits. But then he actually gets a guy a cab and he helps him out, actually. And then he goes back. The ending of the the final ending, which was very confusing for me, again the relationship, uh, whatever. But anyway, so the final ending scene of this novel is he goes to his back home. He's thinking about life, and he sees the ashes of a cigarette. This is very construction prose wise. This is very good. Uh, the cigarette belongs to the widow, and you know, and she looks at him, and she basically they have a weird psychic connection, where she's like, you know, uh, you know, you're not alone. I'm suffering too. We uh, we're both far, and that's the ending. Uh, line well, and of the he book. like tries to avoid direct contact. He like at least in the version I read, he he says something along the lines of um, so the only place I wanted to be was to basically he like got on behind her to watch her, and just kind of like absorb. Which I took I took to be along with the bar scene. He's at the bar. He's 
it's like he, his spidey sense is awakened of having some level of human connectivity and he's just overwhelmed by what actual connection is relative to like very shallow bar hookup which is what his only aspiration was as an autist <laughs> and now he's he's able to find a more controlled environment where he can stand and watch this widow mourn and kind of like try to understand it and like connect with it so in a more real way so the widow uh this is a change because he has a full ass conversation with her in the original version it's a full really? conversation what do they say <laughs> yeah Give us the gist. Um, so basically, um, let's see here. This is during the morning um, when he has his, his, you know, visceral awakening, and he realize, and it's motherfucker, you're alive. Um, he starts thinking about like you know the connections that have sort of passed him by. It. He remembers Thomas, his neighbor. So his his neighbor Thomas had had helped him had helped him move in and he had I, th- I think he got a piece of furniture or something from him and uh oh no he borrowed his drill I think I think that's what it was um and yeah a, a metal power strip that's what it was uh with the name Thomas etched on it um so he realizes that you know he's been listening to he presumes thomas's wife get railed by another guy when thomas is you know not around and wonders you know he goes so he he's like well you know i'm gonna go knock on their door so knocks on their door um and it's as you knock on the door of his apartment you realize that it's nearly noon and he's almost certainly gone off to work so of course it's his wife that opens the door greeting you with a confused expression follows followed by flashes of recognition and contempt. You note again the cognitive impulse to classify her through a practical mode of racial categorization to break out the calipers, as they say. But visual discernment fails to do the trick. Even with a good look at the face, you're still unclear on the specifics of her heritage. A light-skinned admixture evinced by the thin wisps of curly hair that escape from the bun tied around the back of her head and the bioluminescent hum of a nonspecific olive olive complexion of unclear origin so she's like can i help you and he returns the uh the power strip and it goes to her eyes widening track down the point of her husband's name cracking the mask of her face and then just as quickly she seals the gap and drains the sadness from her eyes this reflex sudden mechanical reminds you of yourself acting as a mirror that reflects your own self back to you, making you aware of your own consciousness like a chimp staring at its own reflection for the first time. Seeing this you, or I, whatever, root into the suit of your flesh, entering the meat of your body. I present the metal as an offering. She takes it with both hands, staring on the steel resting over her palms. Thanks, she said, but neither of us move, held in place by the invisible, by the invisible cords of obligation. Okay, so this is a really important scene, and I'm not sure what it's like in in the um, in the second oh, version. That's a, that's the exact okay, scene we have too. We you have, have, you, have yeah. you have you have the break between the first person and the second person. Ours. Well, hold on. Where does this occur for you? Because for this us, he, chapter, he gives her back the thing earlier. He. This is chapter thirty. Yeah, I think we have that in chapter 30 or something similar, but she basically says like, "Oh, he died." Like there's there's a scene where he remembers Thomas So, like, I better so what this. happens is, yeah, then, so he returns it, but the the book so as I said before, there's this constant exchange between first person and second person, and this is where it breaks. Like it breaks in this scene right here, seeing this you and then an ellipse is, or I, or whatever, that's ellipsed, root into the suit of your flesh, entering the meat of your body. And, like, that that is interesting. And, I, and it switches there to, to first person. He sees unguarded... He sees, he sees emotion in another person's face that was completely disconnected from basically anything 
So this is the first time he's actually experiencing empathy, in my opinion, and it breaks him out of his dissociation. Ah, but it's, but she's mechanical, like him. That but that's like, oh, that's where the that, yeah, the that's where the empathy comes yourself. from. Yeah, because they both realize in a fucked up way that there's more to life than just sex, and they're they oh they both come to the same point, of their different means. Yeah, right and through through, um, Anna discovers it through oddly losing his sister, and then uh, she loses it by losing her husband, who she's been cheating off the mass majority of the time. But you no, know, but it's it's kind of like a cosmic sense of like justice. And she feels violated by that. They both feel violated by powers above them. If you know what yeah. I mean. Hmm. Because while he's jerking off, again, the, the lack of, because the walls separate them, right? Well, he has his canceled future of cum and he's jerking off and he's falling to sleep while listening to balls slap against a vagina. You know, she's experiencing balls slap against her vagina, right? But uh, at the end of the day, they both end up just realizing feeling that alone. there's more to yeah. life than sex, but through very mm. cruel ways. Um, so, so, so that's why I said she's the oh, femme. You know what? I'm I'm sorry because after, sorry after that, he goes out for his final drink with Jason, and then on his way home from the final drink with Jason, um, he runs into the wife, um, smoking a cigarette and has a conversation with her. Smoking. Mm-hmm. So did you have? Yeah, because we do have the, oh, the see, part you new. just we read. Have yeah, we have okay. the. I just I was just reading over it again. And we in thirty one, and in, for that in part. chapter thirty one, do you have them having a conversation? No, it wraps up with at the very yeah, end. at the very end. It's yeah, tapping on the chapter cigarette. She drops orange embers onto the concrete, watching them die into black. Line of smoke fades into an apparition, drawing her knees close. She hugs them like another person. I do not know the circumstances under which her husband died. I'm afraid to ask. This alone prevents a conversation. In my head, I can already hear her speaking. What's that, Anon? You thought you were the only one in hell? She closes her face into her hands as if to say, you are not alone. I am right here with you. So yeah, he has like a hypothetical one or two lines, but there's no actual engagement. He's just watching oh, no. and sort of empathizing. No, distance. yeah. So there is there is a direct... He's pretty psychic in yeah. ours. So in... In the in the first version, he he does talk to her, and he says, "Do you mind if I ask when he died?" Surprised to hear I'm not gone, she spits out a quick, bitter burst of laughter. Almost a year ago, she says. She pinches the end of her cigarette, grinding it into the asphalt. The thing about Thomas was that he put his name on practically everything he owned, like some kind of five year old schoolboy. She says, flicking open the flame from a lighter, she cups the end of a fresh cigarette until it burns. Honestly, she says, I'm fine. You don't have to listen to this shit. Waving her hand, she motions for me to leave. I decide that this is not her true intention. And when I see something in the shape of her face, I sit down next to her. Surprised, she tilts her chin in onto a closed fist, craning her neck slightly forward. I'm afraid I don't know your name, she says. I tell her my name and shake her hand. She doesn't tell me hers. She lifts her head and takes another drag, blowing it off to the other side, tapping the shaft of her cigarette. She drops orange embers onto the concrete, watching as they quickly die into black ash. Drawing her legs in close, she hugs them like another person. Cancer. Stupid fucking disease, she says. Ask her what kind. Some rare type I've probably never heard of. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, a real bitch. So this that's keeps it? going on. So, that, that's so I mean, I, there's there's another page and a half. You want me to just read it? Just, no, all right. no. Basically. Well. You this can is, summarize it if you well, recall. Give us the last line. The, the yeah. last line. The la- at least the last line. Give the me the last line. The last line is... Uh, I'll, I'll give you the last paragraph. And yet sometimes when it seems like he couldn't bear anymore, she'd press her hand onto his palm. It's him dying of cancer. Uh, she'd press her hand onto his palm mm-hmm. and his fingers would curl up around hers. Under the robe of his gown, his breaths would settle and the moaning would stop. And for a time there would be calm. Even after all that he had lost, some part of him still remembered, still knew that she had stayed. So that's the end of my unhappy story, she says, finishing her cigarette and dropping it to the ground. She turns to face me and apologizes. Didn't really mean to go off like that, to dump on a stranger for so long. I tell her it's not a big deal. I didn't really mind. And that's the last of the entire, and that's the last line in the book. Interesting. So the ending is completely different because she describes, so this woman that Anon had thought was 
just fucking dudes nonstop when her husband was at work was kind of trying to kill the pain after having, you know, her husband brutally die of cancer and, you know, turn into a husk right in front of her. Um, and she had stayed there the entire time, even when he was comatose. So, um, it's essentially that, he, you know, it's the, the final, like, and at this point he's completely, um, he's completely first person perspective. So he's, he has gained empathy and, uh, and it's sort of the final, like nail in his, his read was wrong. <laughs> it was catastrophically incorrect about the way that, that he assumed people, uh, people behaved. So he, he, he's invited to her bubble of reality yeah. her experiences. They actually overlap. Yeah. They sit next to each other. So the whole bubble yeah. theory comes back kind of. Yeah. I like, I like that actually. I wouldn't have minded. Oh, both endings are quite good because it's, uh, it's left. I thought it was suicide. No. Thomas killed himself because uh, in our Dave's version, it, it gives up that vibe that he finds out or it's very subtle. Our perception is limited. So we had to fill up the gaps. Well, this I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about it, to be honest, because it just comes out very quickly at the end. And then it's just, yeah, I assumed it was natural or a car accident or something, though. But, um, yeah. That's interesting. That is, I don't know which ending's better, actually. Uh, well, well, version three should have the, both. Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> he walks away, but then he comes back. He teleports back for a little follow-up convo. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! You choose your own adventure style. Yeah, CYA. Ooh, CYA. That's a choose good your own ending. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So that's the end of the novel. Yeah, the end of the narrative so. portion. But there's an oh, afterward. But then there's the coal. There's a whole coal mine to dive into. The afterward. Yes, I, the sister. What? No. no. Oh wait, no. We not, never bring up not the coal. No not that coal. Uh, <laughs> I, the afterward i we we we've covered it we've been all over the place i said a couple more thoughts well no, you cover it. you uh, like yeah you you do the afterward do the afterward i i just want to give one or two more thoughts just i really i hope this disappears in future editions because um yeah yeah it just it it to me it left a, a bad taste in the mouth in terms of like i said before there's the direct language of it being as part of a larger the de-radicalization project and I think that turns the novel into a confrontational thing with its intended audience, um, which as part of that inten intended audience and, uh, you know, a, a joyful, casual racist myself, um, it, I feel like it, it opens itself up to attacks because at that point it's, you know, as mentioned, the author um, identifies himself as a, as a, uh, an Asian man. Yeah, we. Had, uh, we I so, guess we don't actually know that because uh, he, all he and all of us are on full opsec. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, his name is Han, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, well, to, yeah. I, 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 I could call I, myself Ching Chang. Yeah, I could. I could have named myself after <laughs> Lovecraft's cat. And <laughs> I feel like <laughs> base. <laughs> base. Dude, the, uh, the amount of beeping in an episode would be off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> but it that was a really great line. So, what do you think, <laughs> <laughs> Burr, Burr, man? <laughs> Bing. Um, but no, but it, but it makes it so. A lot of the the challenges that come up. So, for example, with the racism stuff. There is some talk about you know race talk, and then he's countered by the Reddit. The Reddit army comes in to save the day and counters Anand's um, you know more racial talk. And to me, it very much feels like the author is speaking through these reddit red tarred people and offering some counter arguments as like oh so that i don't know it just puts it in a really in odd spot like imagine if me david wrote how to be less of an n-word and like i and i like tried to sell it to <laughs> black people and i and i say like oh yeah i'm i'm, I'm not black and it's just like and, it, and it's a, the story of a, of a black guy who like stabs you know a brooklynite and is a total sack of shit 
cr- drug head, crazy dude. And then he becomes like, you know what? What a topical reference. Yeah, yeah. Just try to keep it fresh here. You know, I don't know. It, it, it turns it into a, it changes it. It, it's, it, it makes it confrontational. I guess this is the most succinct way to put it in that this is someone on the outside by his own admission of a group, um, explaining to you and uh, trying to de-radicalize you in his own terminology. Um, which I just, I have a, a huge number of issues with that. Like one being this assumption that obviously there are genuinely radical people that like show up churches and do insane things and they should go to prison or, or something. But there's also this assumption that there's a um, much, much like, much like Mencius Moldbug. I abhor violence and think that even violence that directly corresponds to my political interests should not happen. Yeah, and that's exactly. the official I, I position. You know, that's the official <laughs> position of this podcast. Yeah, the sidebar boys Ditto. don't condone anything, but but no, it, it there's this huge implicit bias in this stuff from this stuff i don't know am i making sense here like do you guys do you guys feel no, I this no no cat um, what's your take on the episode so yeah i i feel like the afterword was a mistake you know i feel like it's oh no i hope that no one misunderstands me it's like uh well you know i i guess but it it kind of it hurt the it hurt the it hurt the work as uh, as a piece of art, basically. As being transgressive. Because if did. you're transgressive, you can't apologize for it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, imagine if like Brett Easton Ellis did that at the end of America. Yeah, and I mean and of and of course it, it oh did God. it did go slightly mask off with and I would really I would really like to actually have this conversation with ARX Han. Um, and you know Oh, agreed. Um, I can't wait to interview him. And well, we still have so, yeah, we still have to figure out a voice mod or something like that because he doesn't even want to voice docs. So yeah, it was it was kind of it, it sort of revealed the story as being somewhat didactic and and ultimately like there is a, a there's a moral to the story and it's a normie moral, right? Like you know. Um, well, I mean, it, it may be transgressive. It, in one sense, in it's, sense, it's maybe normy. In no, another no. sense, it's perhaps actually the least normy thing. In, in the sense that it is normy, it's it's, it's like be you know just you know touch touch grass, stop trying, be yourself, bro, and it'll all work out. Because literally, that's what happens in the story. Um, well, maybe not literally. At one point, he does touch grass, but that's not the point where it changes. <laughs> Um, um, so he, uh, um, but also, you know, there's the slightly deeper meaning, um, which I think is, is not, is actually is in fact transgressive, which is, you know, uh, don't treat, don't treat other people as if they're instrumental, um, and like be honest to yourself about what you're actually um about what you're actually like feeling uh because i don't i do not actually i do not think that that is a normie take uh because standard standard culture constantly treats people in instrumental ways and and it's uh quote unquote humanism is often the most dehumanizing thing so Agreed. That's I fundamentally uh, agree with that. So yeah, and I mean, and I don't want to, I don't want to shit on Eric Han here because this book was lit, was written because it, or uh, allegedly, I don't know. We're 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 opsec here, so let's let's charitably say that he is telling the the complete truth in this afterward, um, and that he he lost a friend to suicide. That sucks, right? That sucks. I mean, suicide's fucking stupid. Don't do that. Um, but uh, it, it sucks for the people who survive. But yeah, but I think that having left this in um, probably would have re- removed that from the from the subsequent versions. Yeah, because because the ending either ending is very strong because it, it both endings ask you to chew on it or let it soak in, kind of. 
you know like e- either conversation wants you to kind of really like think on it or let it sit on your nerves a little bit like my first question is like really that's the ending like i of course i had to interpret it you know like i have i have like two and a half pages of like uh of notes i've taken from this so i from my theory cell mind i was like oh what is this and then i got to the afterward and i i wept i wept <laughs> When I, I had the same the experience, dude. I was I love the ending as it's here. I, the one you gave to Cap, I really enjoyed. And then I was just gnashing my teeth in bed reading the afterword because it's like, hey, hey there, in case you missed it. <laughs> I know it was very disempowering experience to have someone just say, oh, here's yes. what you were supposed to get from that, by the way. Those 300 pages of a very, like, convoluted sometimes obtuse deep as you know little mini essays embedded in the larger scenes like is there so much complexity there and i feel like i haven't praised that enough as we've gone through it is messy but it is um it's very beautifully written and it's very well thought out obviously um and then you get kind of a yank at the end our most complex novel we covered by far i would agree yeah so Wrapping it up, uh, Incel by ARX Han, RX Han is um, a deeply uh, unique, absolute torturous book uh, that is worth a read, in my opinion. Um, I how about how about you, Gabe? <laughs> oh fuck you, Dave! You go. <laughs> Overall enjoyed it, but it was, again, it might just be a writing style thing. Maybe I'm just a brain lit and, and those big words scared me. The quality of the prose is really good, but it is, it's very dense and it has that sort of technicality, um, doesn't, it has some pacing issues the first half or so, but it really does pick up and, and overall it's a book I, I'm, I'm glad I've read, but to your point, Cap, it's a kind of a painful experience reading a decent chunk particularly the early part um yeah. it's like in yeah it is a and good, so it, it is a it, good pain in, in my opinion it's a good pain it's like you know i, would, I think it's dense yeah. dare i say God. it's an adaptive pain uh, I've evolution so adaptive. the like you know i i grew up reading like frank herbert i've read read the books that aren't dune and his shit is is dense as fuck uh and this is this is a I mean, it's less dense, but it's uh, as far as fiction goes, it's um, yeah, it 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 is it is quite dense, and you got to be you got to be willing to to get into this like very uncomfortable mechanistic style of prose. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's very intentful and purposeful. So that's the thing I I I can't criticize it because it's over. It's done so well at that level. It's just like it's just hard for me to imagine a lot of people picking up and reading all the way through and enjoying it. Like it's, it's a, I think you'll know if this book is for you, if you read a couple, you know, the sample, yep. I guess that's, that's, that's all I can say about it. Oh, watch you one last thing. I would say it's also, I guess a sign of good art. It evokes extremely powerful reactions. Cause I went from hating to loving the book in a really strong way. And then maybe a little bit of hate again with the afterward, but it, it, overall yeah i, I really it, it's it's a it's a good it's a very good book it's very evocative yeah it's very cra- yeah. it's a very finely crafted yeah. piece yeah all right gabe give, give your last uh ass kissing session here you get two sentences you get two <laughs> sentences gabe you can only um, use one semicolon <laughs> <laughs> incel is a it makes a trilogy of our reviews because yes if you notice i'm <laughs> My interpretation of this is very different from... I mean everything I said about Spencer and about Nutcranker. But the biggest thing about the sad clown thing... I'm going to transfer that from Nutcranker to this. And uh, especially the ending. Right? In a a lot of ways, this is a very foundational check. This is a genealogy of our culture. Of the modern... If you notice, our last... Our great three books of this... Our great four books are all prequels to 2020. Not a single story that we've reviewed so far takes place in our current age it's always at least it's five true. or six years back a mixtape Piperborea, early 2000s nutcranker early early yep. trump the beginning of our epoch um millennium early 2000s yet again the political parts 
And now you have this, which is 2012. You know, his sister, four years after this novel, is probably at laughing at Spencer. She's probably a, a communist well, she, Marxist. She, she, she pissed herself. <laughs> right? She's probably at the pussy. At the, at the women's march. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, she gained a lot. Yeah, Enrique. Dude, that's a yeah. crossover. Yeah. That's a crossover. Yes. And you know what? The afterword is written by a post-ending Spencer. The, the oh, Anna my God. <laughs> right? Anna, <laughs> yes. Anon wrote his memoirs and pu published it with post-radicalization expert Spencer Grunhauer and has become his protege, good doing tours on TEDx about oh radicalization and incels. <laughs> That's crossover. The crossover potential is immense. Um, it pairs very well with Nutcranker. I don't know if you should read this first and then Nutcranker, or Nutcranker in this first. Um, I'm actually chewing on that myself. I, on I did it. About I, this I read on. this before we read Nutcranker. Um, and in fact, it was the, the genesis of the suggestion to do them together. Uh, I would say yeah, that the correct that. reading order is actually Nutcranker, and Inc Nutcranker into Incel, I would say. That's the correct order. It's also the chronological order of their like release. Uh, so True. Um, but anyway... Incel is a very deep novel, very sincere novel. It's not a meme book. It's not meme -y, but it also isn't antagonistic to 4chan or any of our internet groups. It is a work of genuine sincerity of an aspy motherfucker, <laughs> right? Who is the enlightened centrist in a lot of ways, but is a genuinely, objectively, sweetly sincere novel that does not pull any punches and is finally crafted to an insane degree. It's very, very clean and very well produced. And uh, I have immense respect for Mr. A.R.X. Han, despite his <laughs> oriental origins. <laughs> nice. And with that, the nut cell duology is complete. We put our seal of approval. I hope all of our listeners fall asleep without crying. Yeah. And without having to abuse themselves. Don't touch yourself, guys. Clean up Don't the, touch yourself. Clean up that Don't pile. Wear condoms. Touch Call women. <laughs> Clean up that pile. If it gets frozen onto the floor, you you know that you know that's bad. Don't 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 let that happen. No, you should put it. You, you what you should yeah. do is put it into like a turkey baster, so you can use it for impregnation purposes later. <laughs> oh, dude, my favorite movie. Oh, yes, you knew, I got you got that reference. Yeah, I love that. All right, all right. Thank you, everyone. Peace. Please like, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you, and have a good night. Kids, pro tip for all our youngsters who are listening to us. Before you have sex for the first time, please, for the love of God, wear a condom for like a whole day. Or at least part of a day, go make lunch or something.